Hello, this is Greg Prado, author of the books Take It Off, Kiss Truly Unmasked, as well as The Eric Carr Story, amongst many others. You're listening to the Shouted Out Loudcast with Tom and Zeus. Rock and roll! Hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus with another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast, episode 128. Kiss Off the Soundboard, Tokyo. 2001 hey hey <laughs> <laughs> oh what's up my friend this is gonna be a good one another episode where we're doing a review right away we did it with soul station we're doing it with this one everybody's talking about it so yeah let's get it right to it why are we gonna have to wait and play games fuck it exactly right to it agreed agreed yep yep, yep. And we'll have uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi with us, it seems like, throughout this whole uh, uh, episode. Right. <laughs> Five to one. Too much ask anyone. Ace freely. Too much ask anyone to play. <laughs> Ace, suck me solo. Too much for Tommy to play. Ace, show me, shock me. <laughs> Ah, da, 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 da. Hey, is oh. it going like fucking this? Save it. Save it. <laughs> what about what about if it fucking goes like this? Oi. Oi. <laughs> Here we Ace go. Learn in tournament. <laughs> tournament. Oh God. Here we go. Here it comes. So, we ready to get this one on the way? We got a lot of shit to get to. You yeah. know, it's either like feast or famine with Kiss News. We got tons of it. We had a fun episode last week. Last week we did our Kiss member, our third one, and we did it on our little friend Eric Singer. I know a little drummer, and he's right over there. So usually we start these off with the poll. How, what was the poll? Yeah, so uh, we usually don't get controversial with our polls, but this one, the topic, we just had to do it. So, of course, member profile episode on Eric Singer, and the question was simply, are you okay with Eric as the Catman? I was surprised by these results. 69% said, yes, it does not bother me. 31% said, no, Peter is the Catman. Most of the comments were obviously very supportive of uh of of eric and what he does you know people were talking about you know like our buddy deuce he says i've always thought putting the makeup back on should have been a one and done after the tour send ace and peter on their way and bring bruce and eric back put their efforts into writing and releasing great kiss albums instead blah blah blah. gene and paul decided to ride the makeup the theatrics and the pyro into the sunset i have no problem with eric and tommy wearing the makeup it's their job then we got right between let me can i jump on that of course so gene and paul can keep the gravy train going yeah, make up, sell a million fucking, you know, memorabilia shit for the next 25, 30 years. Hardly work. Don't have to do anything or take the makeup off, write new songs, work their ass off, do whatever they can to stand out and be just like every other band and to do whatever they can to get people to come to their show and sell albums. Gee, wonder what they're going to pick to do. Yeah, well, but yeah, but they're in, they're in kind of a no-win situation either way because if they do that, you're right, people are going to be like, "What the hell are these old guys trying to make new music for?" And then if they do it this way, people are like, "Oh, look at them! They're playing the same old shit, and they got two guys, you know, in friggin' Ace and Peter's makeup. Oh, it's a cover band, fake, yeah. really." Yeah, tell me how a lot of bands are doing with their new albums and new materials. Are people fucking going in to see concerts from older classic rock bands and new shit, or are they looking for the? You know, the nostalgia act. And Kiss is nostalgia act both. Is, is way over the top compared to everyone else's nostalgia act. When you yeah, talk yeah, about you, the concert and what it entails and the makeup and all that shit, you know, it's a no-brainer. They're not going to go back to non-makeup. No. It's just not. No, but I know even our buddy Jericho was saying that, too. And But... Whatever. Uh, a lot of co- a lot of comments to get to. Um, a lot. Party man says you can't expect a guy who's been in the band so long to say no to a job like that. Put on the costume and the makeup. Eric has always done a great job. Revenge and Carnival of Souls are both great albums, but I never call him Catman. He is Eric Singer to me, portraying 
the cat man. Okay, fair enough. Vincent Roman Moroni. I would like to direct this to the distinguished members of the panel. You lousy corksuckers. You have violated my Fargan rights. This Samanambachin country was founded so that the liberties of common patriotic citizens like me could not be taken away by a bunch of Fargan ice holes like yourselves. You need a third option. Would have preferred him to be his own character, but I get the reason. In the end, Eric Singer rocks. That was never going to happen because at that point, it became total marketing and nostalgia. The original four faces, the four personas, they were never going to do that. That was people that are referring back to Eric in Eric Carr and Vinny. That was back when that was back when the makeup was on and they were still producing new music. They were never going to do that with Tommy and, and Eric Singer. That was never going to happen. These are grown. This is from Stuart H grown men playing roles. It's showbiz. The people who have a problem with it need to lighten the hell up. They're probably the same people who scream that James Bond isn't blonde. When Daniel Craig got the job settle down. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lance, the way I see it, if it wasn't Eric, someone else would have chosen to do it anyway. So why not have a multi-talented, dependable drummer who has a good reputation in the biz? Um, I think I missed this one here from right between the eyes podcast. Uh, I get to play in the biggest band ever, and I get to wear the most iconic makeup ever. No, I want to be goat man. Please. Are you <laughs> kidding me? You know, the flip side, whatever character they chose, some would say it's stupid and should have just wore the original zero problem here. Gerald Saul Rosenberg singer is by far the most talented drummer they've had. I just wish it have his own character. Same with Tommy. Nah, it's not going to happen. I don't mind Tommy in the band, just not a spaceman. And then he talks about the Eric Carr and Vinnie Vincent thing that we went over. Would have lo- then enjoy the draw says I would have loved new characters created for Tommy and Eric and would have bought plenty more merchandise. Yeah, I don't know. And then he says, I always refer to kiss as Paul, Gene, Ace and Peter, not as star child, demon, spaceman, Catman. Yeah. We talked about that before that really didn't become the play until the makeup was put back on. They became a true nostalgia act that they started to identify with those titles and not their names. That's a good point. Yeah. I uh, listen. I know somebody said it early and it's the same running thing for me, Tom. I do the same thing. It's Tommy and uh, Eric. I will say the star child or the demon. I yeah. have never referred to Tommy as the spaceman. Me neither. Or, or the cat man. Nope. I will say, um, like, you know, oh, they're selling cat man things or things like that. Yeah. To describe it. But I will never identify him as the person unless it's reading something where Tommy says he's the spaceman. Right. Like, when I'm like, oh, dude, don't do that. I'm, I'm the same way. I agree. I'm the same way. Yep. Um, Lee Bruton, uh, I'm cool with it. He's a great drummer. If it was not him, it would be somebody else. Ray Farrow. I love Peter, but singer is a way better drummer. Listen to a live four and then off the soundboard. Not even close. Well, we'll get to that soon. Yeah. So a lot of comments here, a lot of people giving the feedback. I, I, we love this. You know, a lot of people love Eric couple comments about his makeup, but for the most part, like we got here, Rob Marr, the cat man doesn't belong to any individual. Peter Chris was the original. Now it's Eric. If it wasn't Eric, it would be somebody else. I'm a big fan of Eric Singer. I disagree with that. The Catman does belong to Peter because that persona was created by him. I don't want to get into this whole thing, but Gene Simmons is the demon because of his love for monsters. And Spaceman was Ace Frehley because of his out of space, he spaced out. The Catman, they didn't just sit in a circle and say, oh, let's create four personas that aren't based on anything. The Catman was like created this? by Peter. I'm thinking out loud. Who else is similar to them? The only one that just came to mind. It was the first time I thought about this. The yep. Spice Girls. Right. I know they've gone to five, to four, back to five, down to four. Right. They don't bring somebody else in that looks like Posh Spice and says, that's Posh Spice. I agree. You can't. I mean, you could probably put somebody with red hair to sing ginger spice or jerry hallowell's parts but people are gonna be like dude that's fake ginger that's fake you know whatever but you know i can see where they're like trying to keep it together and like the image and that's the same person i yep. guess it was almost the same thing because those in the spice girls created that image how would it be if somebody else first of all no one's gonna be as hot as victoria beckham but if somebody else came in and like oh yeah that's part spice now Ooh. But if they but if they did it, and, and again, I've, again, let's back up a minute that we are comparing Kiss to the Spice Girls, but it's okay. They're character driven bands, but it's the same thing. You're right. It, it would be like that's not that's not posh spice. That's friggin' 
Debbie from Demoulis. That's not that's not fucking <laughs> Debbie from Demoulis market basket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but she's wearing the dress and the same haircut. No, it's 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 posh spice. Okay, so posh spice is in on the tour. They're not gonna put a blonde, long blonde girl to take her part or her parts. I even though I I don't even think she has any singing parts. She's yeah, just gonna look, look good. And guess what else they're not going to do? They're not going to create a new Spice Girl because their marketing is those five names, just like Kiss is those five yeah, names. Yeah, I can't see them Four. going, oh yeah, this is pungent Spice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, look, we got Old Spice. <laughs> we got, we got s- stinky Spice. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a lot of comments here. We love them as always. Let's briefly hit some episode specific comments. Um, let's talk about that because we did get a lot of those too. Uh, and again, it's pretty much the same thing here. A lot of people commenting on Eric's tenure with the with Badlands and people loving that album. We talked about that. Our buddy Steve talking about um, great variety. Saw Eric with Gary Moore, Lita, and Alice. Always been a great drummer. That's pretty awesome. He saw him with all that. Texan Brian. I think that's it. Learned a lot about Eric Singer. I didn't know about the watch. I didn't know about him being a watch con- connoisseur in the gay rumors. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, very informative. Shout it out loud cast is the Kiss Wikipedia podcast. The only podcast that a fan needs. Is that a I'll positive take- thing, Tom? Well, I, th- I don't think he's saying, I think he's comparing us to our supply of knowledge. Not that we go on online and read Wikipedia because we don't do that. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we use it as a source. Yeah. But I was going to say uh, any chance I can throw in Dean John King into the discussion. I'm going to not to be mistaken by King King, King who gets King who got tax thrown at him in fucking <laughs> exacto <laughs> knives in class. That's a different one. King. King, oh, uh, Kevin's on fire. I think Eric Singer may have ended up in Kiss anyways, even if Eric Carr had lived. I could see him leaving Kiss at some point, talking about Eric Carr, considering his relationship with Paul at that time and probably getting little to no creative input going forward. He may have left out of frustration. Interesting theory. I don't I don't disagree with that. I think that that could be something. CLT dude, best drummer the band ever had. I love Peter and Eric Carr, but singer is just better in my opinion. Our buddy, our buddy JR posts a close up and that wig and those cheap <laughs> jowls. Just the just brutal. The poor guy. It just looks bad. God. And somebody puts a photo underneath him. Yeah, you of cousin <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> And then our friend Miserable Curmudgeon, formerly known as Tony from Restrained. Tom had uh, Zeus had Tom laughing so much he sounded like Muttley on this episode. Like <laughs> good stuff. I like it. <laughs> that toy Bonnie guy said you should do an episode on Bruce Kulick. Oh, that's coming. Don't get me wrong. That is coming. Uh, and then Gerald Rosenberg again posted a picture of the Catman Halloween costume with like a little kid wearing it. Oh God. A lot of people loving that Badlands album. Deuce, again, some great comments here. Another informative, humorous, entertaining episode. We love that. Keith O2, I saw Eric live a few times first with Gary Moore. Excellent drummer and good singer. JDK says, Paul and Gene should have given him the lion instead of replacing him with the cat man. He already had that mane, and that way they could have moved on with new ideas. Interesting. He did have the long blonde hair. Lion man, a blonde man. I don't know. Interesting. A blonde uh, basket? Then, no, 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 no. I didn't say a, a blonde. A blonde, a a fruity blonde little basket. weave. <laughs> For his hair plan, because he got his ass kicked at the ball field. The ball and, field. And he only asked somebody just to stand down for, sit down for a little bit so he could see. And they beat him unmercifully. Unmercifully. Right in front of his whole family. And it was awful because when he beat me, my teeth were also in my hairpiece. Your teeth ended up in your hairpiece? Yes. Our buddy Nige said, no, you almost made it through the whole episode. But then from out of nowhere, four minutes from the end, when you knew our defenses would be down, I pledge fucking allegiance. Yes. And I said it. Blame Zeus. He threw it in there. We were almost done with the episode. We'll see. So that's some Twitter stuff. What else you got there, chief? Talk to me, you silly little freak. All right. So. Let's go over to Shout It Out Loudcast's Facebook page. Uh, Kevin Jepson, our buddy uh, Kevin Jepson, who enjoys buying 
Paul Stanley's carpet oh, at Kevin. auctions. Kevin, we love you, but come on. <laughs> I got I bought Vinnie Vincent's floor mats from his car. <laughs> At the car wash that he was working at? <laughs> Anyways, Kevin Jepson says, Eric kicks ass. I've met him so many times over the years. He's always great. Very talkative guy. First time I met him was at the official KISS convention in Chicago. I actually had to walk away from him because he wouldn't shut up. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. He's a pop singer and a rock singer, and he wants to star in his own movie. I want to star in my own videos, direct my own videos. Yeah. Yeah, I want to work on videos, but really I want to be my own star in the videos because I want to become a pop singer and a rock singer and write my own songs, produce my own songs. And then I'm going to try an actress because people tell me how talented I am. I'm a natural and stuff like that. So then I'm going to write my own stories and direct my own stories and, you know, produce the movies I'm doing. And this was after they played in their acoustic set. He's pretty accessible on the cruise, too. Good to know. I've run into him quite a bit. My favorite performance is him playing Parasite during Revenge Era. Major drum acrobatics in that one. Good one, guys. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. Look forward to seeing you on the cruise. Maybe we'll see Eric Singer swimming in the kids' pool. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure you get vaccinated, brother. <laughs> you, had, you had to get that in there. <laughs> oh man. Jason Warden. Being a huge fan of the non-makeup era, band like Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho, Jericho. singer is my favorite kiss drummer. But that probably would have gone to Eric Carr if he was still with us today, as I imagine he would be in Singer's place. Mm-hmm. I've heard other slack on ES, and I don't get it. There has always been a question if Vinny saved Kiss. Hell, ES stepped in ready to go, and he had the experience with Paul's solo tour. I think he may have saved them in the early 90s. And next to Gene and Paul, he's the longest tenured member. Excellent point, Jason. It's a great point, Jason. Well said. Good a one. team player. Stepped aside when the reunion happened and was welcome back afterwards. He took the opportunity opening and made a great career out of it from hired gun to member of one of the greatest rock and roll bands. Yeah. Well said. Good one. Yeah. Good one. Jason right between the eyes podcast hands down. My favorite member. I followed Eric even before kiss black Sabbath, badlands and Alice Cooper. And of course, Paul Stanley fellow Ohio too. Don't forget his appearance on Tobias Samet's Avantasia Supergroup. I mentioned that group. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Eric yep. plays on all of the album The Scarecrow, 2006 to 2008. Hands down, some of the best drumming from Eric ever. Very progressive and operatic music in scope. I had no idea Eric had chops like that. He and Bruce are on the continuing two albums, The Wicked Symphony and Angel of Babylon. I can't recommend those three albums enough. Fantastic drummer and musician. He's a perfect fit for Kiss. There's no one else I would want behind the kit now. Wow. Nice. Okay. That's a great comment. And the other part about your comment is if you think about what you're talking about, a a super group progressive and stuff, then you got Kiss. And then he's playing big band stuff. And then he goes plays in Paul's Motown stuff. It's amazing. It's amazing stuff. Super talented dude. No doubt. Peter Staros. Eric is cool. He's not ace cool, but he's a solid drum and he seems like a cool cat. He's not as fucking cool as me. Remember when I told people I'm the coolest member of Kiss? <laughs> fucking ace. As he's throwing up in the fucking elevator. He'll be throwing um, up all over the stage when we see him in August. <laughs> um, <laughs> David Steggers. Seems to me that Eric Singer's pre Kiss career alone. Would fill up quite a few hours. The yep. cat CV is quite long and impressive. And yes, I said cat on purpose. Ooh. He has earned it. He deserves it. Okay. Fair enough. All right, David. Uh, Michael Anderson. Great episode on Eric. Side piece turned wife. Singer. He's <laughs> not gay. He's got a taste for sake. Look it up. 
the fuck does that mean? I don't know. He's a taste for sake. I'm saying sake. It is sake. Yeah. Yeah, I would assume that's what he's saying. Over on our Loudcasters group page, breaking the press pod, you discuss him. I mean, he's a short fella, but there's no need for that. Oh yeah, what? there was a t- there was a typo. We left off an S on the word discuss. Oh, <laughs> oh, so oh, so is it the grammar police? I, I must have missed out it's on the that. Gra- yeah, short short word for a short drummer, I guess. Gotcha. I don't know. Uh, Graham Richley. Eric Singer is the ultimate professional, great at his job, does as he's asked. He is also interesting, smart, opinionated guy outside the band, but knows when it comes to KISS, he is there for certain input only. He and Tommy are amazing with the fans at meet and greets and on the cruise. Chatting with him was an unexpected highlight. Wow, that's Thanks, awesome. Graham. Very cool. Yeah, uh, breaking the press pod comes back and says, uh, according to some fans, he doesn't provide feel and groove by being slow and missing notes like Peter. Hmm. Well, if they were, Graham says, well, if they were able to pick that up, then good luck to them. Uh, look, I, I, I'm not a drummer. I'm not. I've heard it from all sides. I've heard it from people that are saying that Eric is the most amazing drummer. And then others are like, oh, no one's like Eric Carr. And then others say, like, you guys don't get it. Peter gave the kiss that sound in the early. Mm-hmm. And that's the sound that worked. Like I've heard, and then I hear Peter sucks, and you know yep. it's all over the place. Everyone yep. can have their favorite, but you don't have to say the other person sucks if you prefer somebody else. That's how I look at it. To me, nobody sucks on the drums for Kiss. Never. None of them suck. Never. You just prefer somebody else. That's all. Yeah. So yep. I look at it. Uh, Steve Woods. These are picks from my tour program from the 2001 tour. Eric is an insert, and he just put a bunch of other stuff in here. Yeah, there's Peter Chris and then there's Eric Carr. Max Lynch. I can't speak on what contributions he's made with Alice Cooper and other projects, but with Kiss, he's uninteresting. Trying to portray the Catman. To me, Revenge is overhyped as much as Creatures of the Night was and a- as an album. To have been in that position as long as he's held it, his defined musical presence is minimal. Ooh. Well, look. And I then understand. he's got like fucking like 20 replies people like lee graham his work on gary moore concert cd is killer not to mention his killer contributions in badlands sabbath mark arnold when i got to meet eric he was an interesting guy a lot of energy very cool to talk to and funny i'm eternally grateful that he's helped keep kiss stable and on the road for many years bill algae great episode gents i agree that eric's playing on revenge and Cre- uh carnivals of souls he was in his element he also looks very capital letters bored playing the same shit different day on tour underused talent hey but it's kiss so that's what we have grown to expect and love excellent point bill excellent yeah. point and that's and that's what we were saying when when, I, when we were accusing or when i was accusing of him of appearing bored that was not a comment a commentary on, is the best way yeah right yeah, but it wasn't a commentary on his ability and his technique it was just a, a, a commentary on his appearance and I think getting back to what Max Lynch, I think it was Max Lynch who said the problem with Eric Singer's tenure and kiss is a lot of people have like that recency bias where you associate Eric Singer with what he's doing now, or you associate it with, you know, monster or sonic boom, which, yeah, okay. That's a huge part of the kissology there, but don't, you can't take away what he did like with revenge and carnival of souls and alive three. And even his performance on unplugged, like that stuff was spectacular and that was his style yeah now he's in a nostalgia act and he's playing what he's told to play but you know let's not slag on him as he was just some fill-in cat man guy he had his own identity and he made his own mark on the band yeah to me i just i i like i said everyone could have their preference yeah uh, but anybody like shitting on his ability oh, no way off way, way off. yeah agreed uh, all right, let's go over to YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I want to set that one up for you on a T. Uh, Mr. Antonio, 2005. I stole your love live Brazil, 1994. Sure. knows something. And do you love me? 1995 MTV unplugged hate from carnival is some of my fave Eric drumming and harmonies. Really wish the Eric Bruce unit with Kiss had a longer run together. Me the only too. downfall is Catman wig. 
It's as bad as the new limited edition Gene Simmons animalized raccoon wig. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anthony Stratus. Another great episode, guys. Keep rocking as usual. My favorite Eric Singer track is from Kiss Alive 3, Detroit Rock Singer. Uh, Detroit Rock City. Eric Singer is awesome on that track and that Alive 3 album also. Mark Stewart, as always, I love your podcast. I never miss an episode. I hate Eric Singer wearing Peter Chris's makeup, but I understand why he does. Eric has always been a great rock drummer. History has proven that. But when you listen to Soul Station, a Paul Stanley album that I hate, Eric is amazing. He has the talent to play all styles of music. Great drummer. Shitty Peter Chris lookalike, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, that's oh, rough. Absolutely right. That's rough. All right. As always, we always bring up the rear with our buddy Marty White. Here we go. Uh, Marty says, I'm not going to write a ridiculous comment this week. Oh, <gasps> what? I think it was Tom who gave Tommy some praise shortly after the comments. I want to give a specific example of his decency. You've probably seen the interview where Star Grandpa. Got butt hurt because the interviewer was wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. Oh, yeah. We've seen then that. Then Gene yeah. started backing up Paul, probably to make Paul look less of a douche. Then Scrappy Do Singer started <laughs> bitching too. The only guy who didn't participate in that nonsense was Tommy Thayer. He said nothing. I can imagine he thought the others were all ridiculous. Yep. I agree. I remember that. I yep. remember that as well. So, yep. uh, Tom, we have some emails to wrap this stuff up, right? Yes, we do. Before we get to the emails, I want to read one DM from our friend Craig Moran off of Facebook. This is a good one from him. Um, just finished your Eric Singer episode. Great stuff. I first found Eric Singer when I was lent a copy of the Badlands album by a friend of mine who won a few Grammys with the Dixie Chicks the year they won big. Yeah, they the were Dixie a- Chicks. Future album review crew episode, especially the album Fly. Yeah, I'll take out on that one. I'll, I'll miss that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I set that up, Tom. Anything? Hey, guys, what do you guys think of a Dixie Chicks album review? <laughs> uh, they were a powerhouse band for sure. I love that album. I still play my CD regularly. When I found out when I found out he was the new Kiss drummer, I was sad that I'd never hear Eric Carr on another album, but thrilled they got someone so talented. His impact was made instantly. The classics that were in their live set had a new life to them, largely because of his hard hitting. And once again, a drummer with the perfect raspy voice to pull off the Peter's tracks, Peter tracks. Of course, he's bored with the tracks they play now. Not only has he played the same 15 songs every show for the last 20 years, but they're played at what feels like half speed. Listen to Detroit Rock City from a live three. Then listen to that geriatric version from the Tribeca Film Festival performance. We'll get into that. You cannot even believe it's three-fourths the same band in both performances. I haven't been thrilled with an album of theirs since Carnival of Souls, but I did enjoy the end of the road show at Madison Square Garden. They're a shell of the band they once were, but that blame does not fall on Eric's shoulders. If they told him to break out as a live three drum set for the next tour leg, you'd see a lot more energy from Eric Singer. Great episodes, as always. Thanks for the entertainment. Craig, thank you for the DM. We love hearing from you, buddy. Appreciate it. Good stuff. Good stuff. And some emails here. Mike H., Eric Singer, what's up, Bean Towners? Oh boy, nobody from Boston. Nobody says that. Bean, we love you, buddy. But the people who say that don't live here. We love that. That's just us being assholes. You know that. Uh, my first exposure to Eric Singer was that weird Sabbath era, but I didn't think too much about him and just figured him as someone needing a gig to be able to eat. Then the first Badlands record came out. My opinion of him changed immediately. I thought this is a guy I need to pay attention to. Then I was one of the lucky ones who saw Paul in 89 on a solo tour, and he had Eric as his drummer. This was enough to put this guy permanently on my rock and roll map. If Paul dug him, then who was I to disagree? He became an instant member of the ever-growing Kiss family. He is a good professional soldier and employee who doesn't fight back. Think of how much his ego has to take a back seat then and now. Great show as usual, but I have to admit, listening to you guys each week is very frustrating. I find myself talking back to you, adding my jokes or one-liners, arguing your opinions, laughing and yelling all out loud. My wife thinks I'm crazy. I wish you taped your show in my living room. I have so much to add or ask that I get a little depressed that I can't share my kiss knowledge and opinions. You guys are lucky. Don't ever take it for granted. Mike H. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. 
that is that we we appreciate that. That's that's awesome stuff. Thank you. All right, now we got another one here from James Thompson. Gents, I've emailed the show twice, and both times I've kind of been a negative dick. So I'm going to go ahead and start that way again. First, with the Tokyo soundboard release. I'm actually going to skip this part of his email for right now because we're going to get to the Tokyo soundboard release. We appreciate that part of the email, James, but I'm going to get to the next one. He says, I've always been in the minority of people who think Eric Singer is Kiss's best drummer. I came to this opinion listening to the bootleg shows from the early 90s. I've been a Kiss fan my whole life, but in 1992, information about my favorite band was a little hard to come by. So I didn't know a thing about the guy when Revenge came out. In the summer of that year, I got a hold of a fresh bootleg from the Revenge Club tour in Brooklyn, and it changed my 15-year-old life. The pow from those drums punched me right in the face. 100,000 years from that show might be my favorite version of all time. The way Eric rolled the drums around sounded thunder on the plains of South Dakota. His talent is unmatched. Peter created the classic sound. Eric Carr hit the drums hard and fast, but Eric Singer's skill using voice in his entire drum kit is second to none. I agree that he's bored today. He sounds it and looks it. I also think Gene and Paul put the reins on him since he's been in the cat makeup. You can clearly tell that he's playing the songs more like Peter would have rather than putting his style into it like he used to do in the 90s. Once again, thanks for a great show, fellas. I listen every Saturday morning now that I found this podcast. It seems that I align more with Eddie Trunk than you two on the current state of the band. But I appreciate your passion for the music and the great weekly discussions. Keep up the excellent work. James, awesome email. Thank you very much. Appreciate the kind words. That's great. Thank you. Uh, We got our buddy Lance. Hey, guys. Great show on the recent Eric Singer topic. Eric is probably my second favorite drummer in all of rock music behind Eric Carr. As a former drummer myself who played in local bands outside Youngstown, Ohio, I always thought it was cool that a drummer from Ohio like Singer made it, so to speak, in well-known bands like Kiss and Alice Cooper, among other acts, as opposed to, say, a drummer who was from my area that played on tour with Frankie Yankovic. (laughs) <laughs> okay. One great thing about Eric Singer's drumming, which I thought you guys did a great job discussing, is that he is versatile in his playing from soft ballads and hard rock to R&B and Soul Station to just keeping a solid groove. In some of his Alice Cooper work, he plays a country style format. I don't really think anyone could have fit the Kiss drummer spot after Eric Carr other than Eric Singer. He's been out of the band at times, yet is still brought back, which shows his skills and work ethic that the Gene and Paul obviously like. Lance continues to tell a story about how we met Eric in 2003. Really good stuff there. Um, Then he talks about the Eric Singer, the DVD, the Eric Singer project live at the marquee. Very enjoyable. If you can find a copy of it, I agree with some of your choices in your top 10. I think heart of Chrome was missed on this list. It's a heavy, solid groove. Eh, That's a great song. Yep. Love that stuff off the topic. I wanted to thank you guys for the wonderful, humorous and educational podcast. You guys don't just talk kiss, but you connect people. I've talked to many wonderful KISS fans via social media due to my sometimes humorous rants on your page. The great thing about KISS fans is that they are passionate about what they like and don't like, and your show proves that there is more than just, do you like KISS? (laughs) Finding your podcast made a huge difference in bringing two plus hours every week of just ignoring life's problems and having a great time among the KISS friends. The work you guys put in with research topics and just having a fun time seems effortless, but we know there's hard work involved. You guys are the cheers of the kiss world where people can come and relax and be a part of a great community for our favorite band. Keep it up. Lovely Lance Lumley. Wow. Lance, that's awesome, buddy. Thank you so much. Awesome. Things words. Like, yeah. Things like that are exactly when I'm sitting there do- doing some of the tedious shit things you do yeah. to get an episode done. Right. Is yep. why we do it. Awesome. Like, me and Tom constantly say this all the time. Like, we have enough respect for you guys that we can't just half-ass an episode, Never. which makes it sometimes get to the point where it's, is this fun or is this starting to become work? Right, right. I, we we have too much respect for you guys. I'm, I'm we're being honest to put yeah. some half-ass shit into this stuff. No, and it seems like that seems like the 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 more fans we get, the more interaction we get. It, you know, some other shows might be like, oh. Look at look at we're getting popular. We can just fucking talk about the color of Jean's boots for the next two hours. It's actually the opposite with us. It kind of challenges us to make the episodes even stronger and better and more entertaining. So yeah, you know, and- you got you guys feed us. The, you know, keep you guys keep keep the show going, and we appreciate those kind words more than you could no more than you know. So yeah, absolutely. We, when we're gonna continue doing stuff uh, for you guys because we have too much respect for you guys to put yep. out shitty, unfunny shit 
Exactly. Agreed. And we're going to finish off the feedback with an email from Josiah Horn. Hey, fellas, just got through your episode about Eric Singer. Amazing show. I absolutely love Eric and all he's done. And as I said on Facebook, Lita Ford is my wife. I don't think she knows that yet. A few months ago, when Paul was promoting Now and Then, I participated in a town hall over Zoom with Paul and got to ask one of the questions. I chose to ask him about how Eric got into Soul Station since his comfort zone seemed to be rock and metal. I have attached the audio from Paul and I's conversation below. Keep rocking. Much love. Now, and he, Tom, for everybody out there, he attached it to us. Here it is. I just first I wanted to say real quick, I've got your book Backstage Pass sitting right in front of me. And I wanted to say that that book really changed my life. And it was such a good book for me. Um, so thank you. Uh, my question is that I was hoping that you could tell us how Eric Singer got involved with this project, because this does seem to be just as much out of his comfort zone as it does for you. Well, I, good question. I think comfort zones have more to do with perception by outsiders, um, because what you believe somebody is or who you believe they are, what their limitations are, usually are based upon what you've seen. I know Eric to be a consummate drummer, somebody who can play anything. He grew up uh, playing big bands with his dad. And um, honestly, if uh, if you put a hard rock drummer um, in that narrow terminology, if you put somebody like that into this band, it would have been a disaster um, to hold down the fort and play these songs with the accuracy and feel um, is, is, is not easy, but I knew from the start when I first started, uh, putting soul station together, the first person I thought, well, I sure hope Eric will do it. That's awesome. You played with Eric before. I mean, before I kiss even. <laughs> yes. Um, Eric came in by way of playing with me in a solo, uh, band mm -hmm. I had in 88 that I mm -hmm. took out on tour just to, you know, let off some steam at the end of a, a tour. And uh, uh, so he's been around. He's actually been in KISS, I think, about 25 years, you know, with a few breaks. So um, he's, uh, he's a consummate drummer, and he's a great, great vocalist. The guy can sing yeah. his butt off. Absolutely. Yeah, I love his work on the album, and I'm glad that he's on it. I just, it's good to hear you say that about him. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Nice t-shirt, uh, Josiah. Thank you. An internet friend made it for me. I love the t-shirt, and I love your background. Thank you. you. Know? It, it loves you, know? you too. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Josiah. It's awesome. Thank you, man. That was amazing. That was awesome. And Josiah, for you even having that interaction with Paul and then being an awesome fan of the show and sharing that with us, you, the fan, are this week's comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> Thank you, Josiah, for sharing that with us. And thank you to everybody out there with all the amazing feedback. We appreciate it more than you know. Yeah, uh, for us, that was awesome. I wanted to add, like, Paul's, like, engaging. Very engaging. I've seen him, like, on Kiss Cruises when people ask him questions. He seems standoffish, like, not. Like, people are like, you're my hero. You're my this and that. I love you. And he's just like, mm -hmm. uh, your question? Yeah. Here, he seems like he's going back and forth. That's awesome. Like, I was like, wow, you got you got a very engaging Paul Stanley. And for yep. that, you definitely get a high five. Great yep. job. And thank you for that awesome, awesome email. Yeah, very cool. Good stuff. Yep. Tom, before we go over to our Kiss World, and there's a lot going on in Kiss World, let's talk about our patreon account so patreon is where uh fans and listeners can help and contribute to the podcast and they help us out with uh the show and some of our resources and for us we in turn try to give a little back to them so it's a little private group 
We have different tiers. Uh, there's four tiers. And for us, we continue to uh, engage in fun content there. Uh, a bunch of them, Tom, just started to get, especially the ones, it's awesome that the ones even overseas starting to get some of their, you know, the goodies that they get for being part of the Patreon family. Uh, I know they got the stickers out and, and I had to hand do those myself um, and the T-shirts and the mugs and all that stuff that go out. We appreciate it. And that's the small token of our appreciation for all that you guys do. Uh, it, it's a big help to us. Running the show is a lot more work and effort and costly than you guys can really imagine. And the people at Patreon help and they contribute. And with that, we like to give something a little extra back to them. If anybody's interested in it, please go to patreon.com and you search in the creator box and you find shout it out loudcast and then follow and see what you see if there's anything there that interests you. And if you want to, please join the crew. And uh, if not, you can also go to the Patreon app and also you can find the link to Patreon on the episode notes on every podcast. We always put the episode notes at the end, which has links to our email, our Twitter page, our Patreon account and such. And uh, you can always email us too, or, or direct message us if you're interested and you have questions about it. But uh, we always tip our hat and say, thank you. And we really appreciate you guys uh, for all that you do to our Patreon family. So thank you guys again. Absolutely. Uh, we say this every week. You guys are the best. We appreciate it so much. Any kind of interaction and contribution that you guys are, as Zeus said, there are uh, multiple tiers to take a look at that offer different things. Uh, any contribution in any way, shape or form is amazing. And our gratitude cannot be expressed. And we thank you for that so much. And Zeus commented on, you know, some people posting some pictures, some Patreon people posting some pictures of some merchandise and stuff. I, I want to make a general statement out there, especially this past week. You guys are amazing. If you're, if you're getting a t-shirt or a sticker or a coffee mug or whatever, share that stuff online, man. We love to see that. And it's awesome. And it just increases the, the, the ability for people to see the family that we're creating here as a show and as listeners, and you guys are part of it. So we appreciate you guys posting those pictures and sharing the merch and the stuff that you're getting. And, uh, Thank you again for all that. We love it. Yeah. Tom, let's move it on over to Kiss World. A lot going on. Let us know. All right. So the big thing was the show at the Tribeca Festival there where they were doing the A&E kind of sneak peek thing of their biography that's coming up at the end of the month. And they did a five song set list of Detroit Rock City, Shout It Out Loud, War Machine, Heavens on Fire, Rock and Roll All Night. A little surprised to see War Machine, kind of an aggressive song for that type of crowd. You know, we saw them. They did the bombs, the flames and everything. I don't know how great they sounded. It's the first time they've performed since the New Year's Eve show in Dubai. So it's been about six months. It was good. It was exciting. It was nice to see our boys back on stage. And obviously everybody's getting ready for that biography special that's in a couple weeks. Uh, Zeus, I'm sure you saw the performance on uh, YouTube as well. Yeah, so two and a half songs each. Yes, exactly. Yep. Right? Good way to look at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe they'll do that. Maybe some Gene songs coming into the set list coming up, right? Yep. Cut back on Paul. Yeah, perhaps. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just interesting that they played a five song set list. They they put in a non makeup song in the middle of that set list. Yeah. I know, interesting. So, I agree. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then it was interesting because right after that, this was just typical Paul Stanley Renaissance man pandemic Paul. <laughs> so it's it's almost as if he was like, oh, we were on stage. I had makeup on. We were singing Kiss songs and we were blowing up stuff. But I'm still the Renaissance man because then out of nowhere, he just goes onto Twitter and says, "What's my favorite all time art piece? It's Michelangelo's Pieta." mind-boggling and astounding how does someone infuse a soul into a block of marble transform it into draping cloth supple flesh and serene grace i'm in awe every time i see it wow you literally just sang heavens on fire 48 hours ago <laughs> relax no one's confusing you with anybody special Ugh. his twitter is just relax oh yeah so then he adds in another tweet and he invites 
that starts with if I were you should be disregarded. So except for <laughs> so something like Wesley Snipes that goes up to you and goes, Hey, if I were you, I wouldn't be paying those taxes, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Paul I guess Stanley. that one that one he'd be right on, right? Oh god. Oh. Uh so some other big news, the US tour for the fall or late summer fall is back on and confirmed so we will be going to our show in Mansfield, Mass in August. We are fired up for that. Um word on the street is that David Lee Roth will no longer be the opening act. Uh but we don't know who is going to be the opening act. That has yet to be announced. I heard that they're going to get a guy with a box of crayons and a couple sheets of paper to draw pictures since the painter's not around anymore. Uh, no, I other heard than that, I don't know. I heard it's Joey Casada in in four buckets, <laughs> white buckets outside the TD Garden. I'm not kidding. I would love to listen to that. I, I would rather that I don't want to hear Joey Casada playing fucking buckets. What if White it's Joey? Buckets. What if it's Joey Casada just getting up there and just like just talking about how awesome we are? Yeah, I, I don't think Joey's going to do that for us. I don't think he's going to do uh, that for us either. Yeah, and uh, we'll find out if he listens to this episode because he'll comment if he uh, listens. Oh, he'll say something rude and insulting back, but that's okay. Oh, he was back on the tour though. He was on the road with Eric Martin. God bless yeah. him, man. I'm happy for him. He was on out there doing his thing. With yep. Eric Martin show, but no one cares to see the fucking drama. Sit back, sit down, and shut the fuck up, and, get, <laughs> and go hit the fucking and throw some sticks to some of the fans, you cheap bastard. Yeah, settle down, Casada. My <laughs> God's sakes! All right, so that's back on. We're excited about that. And then another thing that was floating around on social media that some people were tagging us in. I have yet to see it. I believe Zeus saw it. Was this documentary about the seventy-year-old demon? It's about yeah, an we'll hour. Get into that. We'll yeah, get into a, that at some point. Yeah, I saw it. It was pretty interesting. But you know what? I, I find anything interesting on Kiss. Of course. It, it, is of it, course. This, you know, it, it's a typical thing of Kiss these days. You'll watch an hour and 10 minutes, and you're pumped because you saw five minutes of stuff that's different and interesting. But yeah. then you see, like, you know, Gene talking about growing up in Israel. Yeah. And Gene talking about this. And then Gene, like, you know, it's the same old cliche stuff. Yeah. But yeah. it's taken in Japan and Japan kind of a tour thing. It's interesting shit. I, you know, I, I never tell people don't see it. Right. So. Well, well, yeah, we'll save some extra comments. I don't know. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do a full review on it if it becomes uh, a bigger deal. But, uh, and then of course, Paul Stanley comments an article from Blabbermouth. Yeah. Uh, Paul was doing a, an interview, uh, and he was talking about, of course, uh, Ace and Peter. Uh, it was an interview with Germany's Rock and Ten, uh, and Ten A. I don't know. She so was asked if he has any new information about the possibility of uh, Ace and Peter taking part in the End of the Road tour. And of course, typical Paul, I have none. This really is a celebration of Kiss, not any lineup of the band. And while I will say that Kiss wouldn't have existed without Ace and Peter in the beginning, I can also say that Kiss wouldn't exist with Ace and Peter in the band today. What a dick. So that being said, look, it's a celebration of the band and whatever happens will happen. I have no feelings of wanting to omit them or not have them be a part of it, but I'm not losing sleep over it. And if it's meant to be, it will happen. Spoken like a true politician that is not going to show his cards at all. He absolutely 100% knows whether Ace and Peter are going to be on this tour, but of course he's not going to say it, but of course he's going to get his little daggers in there too. The band wouldn't exist today with them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's actually going to co-host the talk, Tom. He's been on that show, hawking shit and cooking and exercising his awful backstage pass book. Oof. And he's going to co-host it. So by the time you hear this episode, you missed it. Uh, a Thursday and Friday, I guess, on CBS. He's yep. doing that. And um, in addition to that, I also want to quickly bring up, there was some, you know, there's more leaking of the a e biography. Oh, yeah. I'm Stop. almost tempted to say Stuart. Oops. Um, gotta cut the shit. Guys, cut the shit. Stop talking about shit. Oh, well, this part's in it. And Peter said, like, like, I don't want to hear it. Let me watch what? it. I don't understand why people need to bring this shit up and 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 like and get in the middle of the story. You know, it's just leave it alone. Let us see it and enjoy it, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to see it. Don't guys don't put shit like that on our page and stuff. Let's just see it all together. 
and we'll comment all about it afterwards. Yeah, because if you haven't noticed, we haven't commented or retweeted or any of these things that people are tweeting about early screenings that they've seen. I don't want to know any of it. I'm, I'm skipping all of it. We want to see it when it's on at the end of the month. Yeah, there was a Bruce photo recently. He just put up a photo of him, Eric, and Gene yep. in like their fucking cabana wear. I don't know what they were wearing. Um, and the three of them, non-makeup, obviously, in Vegas. <clears throat> Coincidence? Foreshadowing? I don't know. Dude, Eric looks like he's three and a half feet tall in that picture. Uh, it, yeah. is un- it is unbelievable, the poor guy. He's not what you would call a tall person. No, no. And standing next to Bruce and Gene makes it even worse. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that interesting photo. It was just taken yesterday, according to Bruce. So well, according, you know, we're recording on Wednesday the 16th. So interesting photo for sure. Could it mean anything? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll I don't find know. Out. I'm telling you, there's shit going on in Vegas after this is all done. Yeah, that's just my that. foreshadowing. Let's, let's hope uh, you're right. Tom, there's some more cruise updates. We are pissed beyond belief that our buddy... Mr. Jericho is not on the fucking cruise. We're like, what's going on? He's like, ah, I got shit coming up and he can't make it. And rat is not going to be there. Rat who I fucking love, love is not going to be on the cruise. Neither is my buddy Jericho, uh, and your buddy as well. Um, and Fozzy, the band. Yeah. And, and people are like, okay, who are you replacing them with? Is Metallica coming on? Are you going to have, uh, is, uh, I don't know, Katy Perry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to come yeah. on <laughs> the cruise, the Kiss Cruise. Yeah, I'll tell you, we were, Zeus and I were like on fucking suicide watch when we found <laughs> out that both Rat and Jericho and Fozzie bailed. And all the news dropped at the same time. We, we would, I mean, I've seen Rat a bunch of times. I love Rat, same don't here. get me wrong. I was, we were jacked for Fozzie and Jericho. To see him on the cruise, to see him do the Q and A with the band, we understand everybody's got lives and things change. Now, today again, Wednesday the sixteenth, two new announcements were made. Comedian Craig Gas, who does the greatest Gene Simmons from Kiss impersonation, he's going to be on there. But the thing that's exciting to me, not so much to Zeus, is that Night Ranger was added, and I fucking love that band, and I've never seen them before, and I cannot wait to see them. I'm thrilled with that addition. And I'm glad that the Kiss Cruise people are trying to fill in spots because when Fozzie and Rat were pulled, people went on the Cruise Fest or the Kiss Cruise Facebook page and were being like, "Uh, are you going to fill in the void here with these? Because these were two big attractions, Fozzie and Rat. So they answered with Night Ranger. I'm happy about that. Um, Hopefully there's a little bit more too, but Night Ranger, I'm thrilled with that addition. I like Night Ranger. Don't get me wrong, Tom. I like Night Ranger. Yep. But I almost am tempted to not like them because Sonny loves them. <laughs> <laughs> Who, Pandemic Pony? <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, Tom, there's, there was like an entertainment uh, tonight, like little clip of them interviewing the band before the oh, big. And then stupid. they ask and they're like hinting, so-and-so has a secret. And he never told Gene Simmons about his death. It's like, what's your secret? And he goes, and then Paul says, I'm a better songwriter than Gene. And they're all like, and, oh, 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 that's funny. And then, yeah. And Eric's like, that's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like fucking giggling like little I, school girls. The, the fucking kiss nerd in me comes out and I psychoanalyze this whole thing. I'm like, yep. that is kiss. You can look at that now. There's fucking if Gene ever said the opposite. I'm a better songwriter than Paul in a joking fashion. Well, would Paul would the fucking, fucking set. Paul would be like, "Have you heard some of your so-? like?" He would get insulted. He would insult Gene. It would be fucking awkward. It would be very uncomfortable. It'd be bullshit. Gene, without hesitation, takes it and laughs. He doesn't because- give a fuck. He doesn't need Paul. It's like fucking. He doesn't care if Paul mock. He doesn't give a shit because you know why? Kaching, kaching. Keep talking, Star Child. You're lucky not we're a- making the money we are. Not only that, that whole little segment showcases the, the 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 levels of confidence in each of them. Gene's like, I don't give a shit. Say what you want about me. You're saying that because you're insecure, and you're saying that because there's probably a little bit of truth in your heart that you think that. So go ahead. I don't give a fuck. Go ahead. 
I'll say it. I'm, I'm, I'm the demon. I'm Gene Simmons. I know people love me. I don't need to make jokes about you. And I'll tell you right now, what do they say? Every, every joke, there's a hint of truth. You know that Paul made that comment and he was not laughing when he said, oh, no, no. we're getting a big audience because there's going to be a big thing on us. Yep. I'm the leader of this band. Exactly. I'm exactly. I write the great songs here. Not yep. him. Yep. Even though the most famous song in the band was, is Gene singing, even though our biggest hit was written by Peter. Yep. Um, Right? It's true. No, you're right. So, I I'm, I hear you. I know. Another aspect of that, could you imagine if Gene made the comment? Do you think in a million fucking years Eric Singer would jump in and say, Oh, that ain't a, hey, that ain't, that's not a secret? <laughs> Never. Never. He would be like first of all, if Gene <laughs> said that, it'd be you'd hear crickets. Nobody would say um, anything. You you'd hear, Hey Doc, get yeah. Peter on the phone. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> somebody who brought the midget. <laughs> um, Eric, you're out of you're out of Soul Station. Good, I don't have to fucking play this shit. See oh ya. no, I don't. Oh oh no, I don't have to play Ooh Child with you again or whatever fucking song it was. <laughs> I don't have to wear that hat <laughs> or that shoe or that dress that you got on. Whatever the fucking whatever that. Urban sombrero you're wearing in the video. I don't have to be in these fucking ridiculous videos with you You're doing the hand jive in that stupid jacket. <laughs> you making those stupid faces and awful dance moves. Oh, Eric, Eric would be like, "Oh fuck, I can't believe it took this long." See ya, bitches. <laughs> Eric, you're not going to be in such. Bye. <laughs> you see taillights. See you later. All, All right. right, let's get to this bitch. <laughs> Tom, let's get over to our main subject of the evening. So, Tom, we're going to do Kiss Off the Soundboard Tokyo 2001. It's our second live album review after Kiss Alive 3. Now, obviously, the album was just released on Friday, last Friday, June 11th, 2021. Mm-hmm. I got my copy from Amazon. Came in the same day on that Friday, pre-ordered it. And I know a lot of people were pissed they got it the other ways. They ordered it from Kiss online and did not get it on release day. So uh, let's start with that. Yeah, Kiss's shitty business model, as of the this recording on Wednesday the 16th, I still don't have mine. Uh, it's coming tomorrow. So by the time you hear this, I will have had it. But Kiss's business model is horseshit. If fucking this can be available in record stores on release date, which it was, this near me that had it, Amazon ships things so that on release day you get them. Kiss does it the other way around. They wait for it to be released and then they fucking ship it, which is ridiculous. And they don't charge. And it's there's no free shipping like Amazon. Yes. So that pissed. So that that pissed me off. Now, of course, I've been listening to it on Apple Music. So uh, you know, I've been listening to this thing since it came out. Um, but yeah, that, that was a, that was a shitty way to start it off for me. So. Yes. For me, I got the CD. I, I'm yep. always going to get the CD. Yep. Uh, I didn't, I'm not getting any vinyl or anything like that. So, you know, we heard about this soundboard um, uh, series that was coming and coming and coming. And they kind of sneak peeked that this one is one from 2001 with Eric in the makeup mm-hmm. instead of Peter with Ace, only three of the original members yep. And so everyone was really Interested in getting it A new release from Kiss, official from the band Yeah, we all jumped on it Of course, absolutely Yep, and uh, this is from the March 13th 2001 show at the Tokyo Dome, which is pretty amazing Because the attendance for this show Was almost 42,000 People, that is Fucking insane That is insane like for 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 a show of, of of that time, it was the farewell tour, um, and of course Zeus already mentioned that Eric Singer was in the Catman makeup because there was a fallout with Peter, so he bailed. So yeah, they were here in Japan with uh, with uh, Ace and uh, and Eric. Twentieth anniversary of it, you know. I think when the announcement was out, people were like, "What the fuck is this?" An, an official. I mean, it's kind of a contradiction to say official bootleg, but we get it. You know, off the soundboard, and for people that aren't familiar with what that means. A lot of bootlegs that are out there. I have a couple of bootlegs from overseas on vinyl, and a lot of them come from the soundboard recording, which is pretty much the most natural recording that you can get for a bootleg. 
a lot of it is completely unedited like this one. We'll talk about that. So that's why they call it off the soundboard. And from, from what we're hearing, this is the beginning of a series, which is phenomenal because Zeus, me and you are huge Pearl Jam fans. You yep. remember when Pearl Jam did the same thing, they would drop in bootleg official releases from concerts all over the country, all over the world, from all different mm-hmm. eras. So mm-hmm. this is exciting if this is the case. I, I know I am excited about it, and I think every other Kiss fan is too. Yeah. And so like we do on most albums, we always talk about, uh, you know, how did we find it? What's our first memory? Well, we just did that because we just <laughs> talked about our first memory of this album. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So the next thing we do is we get into album cover. Mm-hmm. I'm I, I'm kind of speechless. So why don't you take you over? Why don't you start with this? Okay. I think everybody's instinct was to be like, what the fuck is this? It's, it's got like the stamp of the Kiss Army logo, which says off the soundboard Tokyo 2001 with the four band members. I, I think the whole point of this was to make it look like an official soundboard tape that the producers would take at the end of the show and put into storage or put into a cart or whatever. To, so they want to make it look like that. Okay. I get that. But then when you open up the inside of it, there's nothing in there. There's no picture. There is literally nothing like that is stunning. There's not a picture of the four faces. There's not a picture of anything. Again, I know they're trying to make it look like a quote unquote official bootleg. So I get that, but there's not even like an insert or, or, or nothing. Now, Two reasons why I think that's the case. This is just my opinion. I think, A, they wanted to stick to the, the the concept of an official bootleg. Two, I don't think they're ever going to release something with Ace Freely as the spaceman and have a picture of it with Tommy Thayer still in the band as the spaceman. So I don't think you were ever going to see a picture oh. of the band on this tour. Wow. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you said me, you were spe- you said you were speechless. So try to no, be. No, it made it made sense, Tom. Um, for me, I, I look at this cover and I'm like, I get. I guess I get what they're trying to do. Yeah. I think Aerosmith did their uh, bootleg type of album, their live album in the exactly. 70s, similar style. Yep. What's that called again? Live bootleg. I think it's just called yeah. live bootleg. I think. But yeah, same but kind you, of packaging. Yeah. You open this up and you're like. Come on, are you serious? No insert at all? Nothing. It's or stunning. information about the concert? You're not hurting anybody by putting some information or talking about what this album is and what the series is going to be about and things like that. Nothing. Here you go. That's, Fuck off. That's the, that's, that's the interesting. Fuck off, fans. Take it. You'll buy it. That's the interesting and thing. We'll I could see, I could see, okay, you don't want to put a picture in there, but like you said, not even a little booklet about, hey, we're proud to kick off this new off the soundboard series, you know, Tokyo 2001. This was the show when Ace Frehley and Eric Singer, we did this and this, these songs were in the set list and like just nothing, just like manufacture the disc or the vinyl and here you go, take it and have do with it what you please. Yeah. There's no thank you or we nope. love you or anything like that. No, nope. I mean. On the left, you open it up. It has the band members, guitar, vocals, each four members and what they do. Executive producers, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. And then you have management, Doc McGee. Special thanks, Andrew Daw and Caroline Backer. Okay, thanks. And then on the right-hand side, they just have the the song tracks. The back, same thing, and just lists. Tokyo Dome, Tokyo, Japan, March 13, 2001. And then they have the FBI anti piracy warning. Ooh, that's exciting to oh, see. That's awesome. And kissonline.com. Ooh. Okay. So, yeah, yeah this sucks. Yeah, I think, and, and again, I think that co- I think the concept is to keep it like a true bootleg, you know, and that's, you know, but, but then again, I have bootlegs from overseas that have uh, some better artwork than some studio releases. They could yeah. have thrown something in there. They didn't have to make it look like that standard cardboard packaging bootleg, but whatever. That's what they did. So we'll see. Yeah. So that's the album. Then we have the tracks. Yep. There's two albums. There's two uh, discs for me as a CD. Yep. Uh, disc one, disc two. Disc one has 12 songs. Disc two has nine. Mm-hmm. So if my... Arlington High School education tells me that makes it 21 tracks. 
Good for you. Excellent work. Trying my you. best, buddy. Not easy. Yeah. Pretty Not good. Easy. Very proud uh, of you. Yeah. So with those 21 tracks, do you want to get into them right now and just start right off? Yeah, let's just go through them real quick and see what, what's what's happening with this stuff. So what do we got? What do we got there? What do we got there? Talk to me. This isn't going to be like Kiss Alive 3 because they're going to open up with the famous saying, all right, Tokyo. Yep. And I'll get to some part about that afterwards, but. Okay. You want the best. You got the best, the hottest band in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. And then they open up with DRC, Detroit Rock City. Yep. Weren't going to expect anything else other than that, or maybe Deuce. A long way removed from opening up with Creatures of the Night from Alive 3. Mm-hmm. So they open up with DRC. I, the first thing I notice is Paul's raspy screech. Oh, woo! Ah, whatever he's doing there. Yeah. But I also pick up his, his voice is intact. It's not 80s uh, unplugged 90s Paul, but it's certainly not modern Paul. No. You pick that up, and I and I gotta tell you, I mean, there's something about jeans. Get up, get down. I, mm-hmm. I just there's something about when you pick up his voice over everything else doing that. It's just it gives me chills. It just like this is why I love this fucking band. Paul does his little screech again before the the uh, doing ninety five vo- verse. I don't understand that. Wow, where did that thing fucking go? Thank God it's gone. Actually. And the only other thing I want to add on this, now we're used to so much the Tommy Thayer guitar live tracks and live concerts because we see him so much. The guitar is different in this whole album. The tone is different on the solo. Like, I picked that up. I'm like, this is not the same. And it's almost gets back to sometimes you're like, shit, Tommy does ace better than ace. So, yeah, yeah, a couple, ahead, yeah, a couple things. Yeah, first thing you notice the band, the band sounds great, you know, with Paul howling and stuff. But the first, the thing that immediately caught my eye was that when Paul started singing, the mic, the clarity of the mic sounded almost like he was like not standing in front of the mic or the way the mic was picking up his voice. That 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 mm-hmm. kind of threw me off. I mean, I I kind of adjusted to it, but yeah, I I got here the solo by Ace is meh. It, it's not. Yeah. It's just not there like it's it it's just not there it's not what we're used to now it's not the you're right tommy does ace better than ace (laughs) the color by numbers tommy performance is what we're used to now right but but you can you can hear some notes we like oh i think he hit the wrong string there like ah we're gonna get fucking tortured by the ace cult. That's okay. Ace is natural. Ace is a sloppy but awesome guitar player. Tommy I love Ace. Has no feel. I, yeah, I love. I love Ace. Don't get me wrong. I'm I just love saying him. it. Just it. It's a good version of DRC. I'm not yeah. complaining about it. It's not like oh, I don't really like this. It's good. Yeah. I don't know if I hear anything of Detroit Rock City that's bad. Even the. Fucking in the studio manufacturing end of the right. road. Detroit Rock City is good, so yep. I, I'm not gonna ever complain. I thought it's a good job, and they opened up great. And I loved knowing, like, okay, so I don't have to worry. Paul's voice is fine, but yep. you do pick up on when you listen to other music, and then you listen to this album. Like, I think I gotta turn this up a little, yeah, because the sound, right? Yep. It's not yep. Eddie Kramer fucking doing this. Well, I think this is a true studios, right? Yeah, I I, I think this is a truly untouched live album. I think that's the whole bootleg philosophy. It's just we'll get into that, too. Oh, yeah, we certainly we certainly will. So, yeah. So then after that, they go to the they go to right after that, they go to Deuce. Yeah. And go ahead. Two things I want to mention. Sure. You know me. I'm OCD. Yeah. And I pick up on shit. Mm -hmm. I listened to this album a couple times through. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to fucking keep track. After the second time I listen, I'm going to keep track. I'm like, how many fucking times are they going to say Tokyo? Mm -hmm. I counted 46. Mm -hmm. 46 times. I think they get it. You're in Tokyo. It was at the point that was getting on my fucking nerves. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Are you you telling? Are you telling? Are you telling someone specific to shut up the fuck up? 
because I am. I'm going to get it out of the way. I'm going to I'm going to get it out of the way right now. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to get it out of the way right oh, now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you do. Okay. You think Tokyo is bad. He compounds it with over 25 people. Counted those as well. Take people. Take Tokyo. Put them in a fucking bag and throw them in the fucking, I don't know, Al Wife Brook in Arlington. There you go. And shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> shut the fuck up. So I'm going to say this now. I'm going to get out of the way. This is the most annoying Paul performance I have ever heard. I've seen Kiss in concert 21 times, many of them with you. Yes. And I love the Paul banter. Either one of two things is happening here. Either the experience of seeing them in person kind of covers up the banter, or he is so over the top on this recording. It is insane. He, he, he interrupts and ruins a lot of this live album. I'm going to say it right now. In th- oh, I've got a lot of the shit verbatim written down. It's it is it it really it really takes your your eyes off the prize as you're trying to enjoy this album, and I know that Paul's game is banter and stage rap, etc. This is absurd. His performance on this album. There's other. Uh, there's another third option. Either you keep saying either. The third option is that we're both turning into miserable curmudgeon Tony Musalam. I don't think so. Visible Fox. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, no, because. <laughs> We've we've listened to every Kiss live album before. We've seen them in concert a bunch of times. He has never done this before. Oh, it, it, maybe it's the Tokyo thing. It, maybe Dude, you really need to say the city forty six fucking times. Here's another thing too, and I mean this in all sincerity. I, I, this is not. And a I joke. might be off one or two, so don't fucking Kiss nerds out there flip out on me. <laughs> Audio's forty seven. I missed one during hundred thousand years. <laughs> Here's another thing, and I mean this sincerely, and I'm not joking. The this is there's almost forty seven thousand people in this arena. How many of them, other than the Kiss songs themselves, how many of them legitimately understand English? And I mean that sincerely. So, so I would assume a lot of them. You do, you do. Yeah, I would assume a lot because of them he's do. carrying on conversations with the crowd, and I'm like. There's 47,000 people in Tokyo. I know that a lot of people in Japan speak English. I get that. But I don't know. The, I'm glad we got it out of the way. I'm glad we got our Paul venting out of the way because it was fucking rough. Well, but anyways, it's better than his Mr. Miyagi impressions that he does where he thinks Hunshu, he can- Hunshu, Hunshu, <laughs> or whatever the fuck he's saying. Or when he goes, Doro Merigato. Yeah, like, <laughs> what do you mean he's gonna sing more re- uh, Mr. Roboto? I would have, well, dude. Hit, hit, welcome, Sticks, Dennis <laughs> DeYoung. We're gonna do Mr. Roboto. <laughs> what the fuck? And he does it like with that accent that he thinks he's like Japanese. Oh, he's he, like, doing it with the impersonation voice that Eddie Murphy would use to make fun of somebody that's Japanese. <laughs> 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 It sounds like the fucking. And this is another local fucking inside joke. It Go sounds ahead. like reporting live from Revere, Jorge Giorga. <laughs> <laughs> like it's everything's going well, and then all of a sudden he says something Japanese, and it's like, what a horror. Like, like, come on, dude. Hunchu, Hunchu, Hunchu. I'm like, what? Well, I don't know. What, what is that? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to his Miyagi impressions. All right, we'll get to it. So, so getting so getting back to Deuce. <laughs> we're only on the second. <laughs> we're only on the second. Oh, so oh. this episode, this episode's gonna be four hours we're long. Be like, what the <laughs> fuck? You guys hated this, and we're like, no, thumbs up. <laughs> it's five stars. <laughs> you guys just shit on this album for two hours, and you're like, oh yeah, go buy it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but anyways, getting speaking about the song itself, I think Gene. I think Gene sounds great. I think his vocals sound great. Once again, another kind of meh solo from Ace. I'm I'm just not digging Ace. I'm just not digging Ace. Two songs in a row. I'm not digging it. All right. There's a weird intro in the beginning of this. And then it stops. Yeah. It starts twice. I've never heard that before on a do song. Me neither. I don't know if they I did don't... it the little tour or if they've done it in past. I didn't pick up on that. I yep. put it down too as well. Gene sounds great. Eric too. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. Eric sounds excellent. Yep. Paul's do it <laughs> just 
Oh, God, shut up. So shut up. Tom, so I put this about Ace. Ace does the solo, but it just, is it me? I put, it just feels slower yep. than everything is on ER, end of road. <laughs> slower than end on the road. I know more sloppy, but is it still just as good? Not sure. Makes me feel Tommy is a machine. I, I'm telling you right now, one thing that's interesting about which uh, <laughs> meaning Tommy hits it night after night after night. He's fucking on it. Look, maybe maybe there was some sinister reason for Kiss releasing a live album with Ace Freely in it. So that oh, people yeah, like you said that before. So that people like me and you could be like, holy shit, thank God Tommy's on the tour, not Ace. Now but these uh, aren't I, that bad to say no, that. No, no, no. I know. But I'm noticing the same thing. The tone, the 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 speed of the solo, it just so, sounds it sounds off. It's it just sounds off. It just makes me just because we're so used to Tommy that we're like, you should be hearing that. You know how people sometimes are like, yep. and I'll never understand it, that are so used to a version of a song and then they hear the new one, they're like, Oh, this is so much better. Like yep. I can't do it, even if it is better, but I've no I'm used to that version. Right, I like right. So right. I'm used to Tommy. So, and yep. then obviously you got the gene with, let me hear you. I want to hear you. Dude, yep. I, all the let me hear you is I can't hear you. I can't hear Dude, then open up your fucking ears, jackass. Open your fucking ears, jackass. Dude, there's 47,000 people that you can hear them. We get it. Stop. <laughs> this isn't that man's field where there's going to be 6,000 people when we go in August. Yeah. And this is when, at the end of the song, Paul screeches again. Tell Paul starts speaking Japanese, I put, question mark. Yep. How's everyone feeling? We've been waiting to bring the farewell show to Tokyo Dome. We are honored to be here. We promise you a night of rock and roll. And then he gets into, it's getting cold outside. But in here, it's getting hot. <laughs> then, Tom, then I'm looking at the CD. I'm like, yeah. is Harder Than Hell coming up? Like, what the fuck? What song's next? Why are you talking about it's getting hot? And, and like, then they stop the next- playing and then they stop playing like that slow like drum beat. And I'm like, is Paul like shaking his ass right now for the crowd? Or like what well, I don't understand. You're right, because I'm like, why are you saying it's cold and hot right now? What are you doing? I don't get yeah, it. Where's this going? Are you going right. to Firehouse? Are you right. going to Hotter Than Hell? And then oh. yeah, I put drums and are you ready? Peep. And then he does the stupid thing. And this is what the part that I'm like, yeah, that's why they have no editors. Because this yeah. is a fucking uh, people, let me hear you over there. Yep. People over here, people in the middle. And I'm like, fuck it. Don't, I don't want to see it at the concert. I don't want to hear it. I'm a pain yep. to hear this on a fucking album. Yep. And I know. Like, and then you know what they get into next? Track number three. Shout it out loud. And Never heard at, of it. at this point, it, this is at this point, I'm like, third song, they just they're already sounding tired to me. Now, no, this is what it is, Tom. Let me okay. jump in here real quick. No, go ahead. He, please do. Oh, he obviously does this. He, if you want a little rock and roll, all you got to do is shout it out loud. Yeah. When the when the guitar starts, I just want to say this one part. It sounds like a record player, and the record player is on slow. Yep. It sounds, it sounds out like, of whack. Fuck. Like, dude, sounds- who the fuck is drunk? <laughs> <laughs> See the problem. The pro- the problem with shout it out loud. The way that the song was originally recorded on Destroyer, there's kind of like some atonal notes on that that don't translate well to being played live. Because wh- when you when they're played live, they sound like you're hitting the wrong string to to try to recreate yeah, that sound from the high st- pitch. And you're like, yes, hey. yes, and it sounds like it's slow, like yeah. something's off. Yeah, and, and then and, and then and then Ace jumps in at the end when it's like you know now everybody shout it out you know they give Ace a little vocal there at the at the end. Of the I song. like that. I yeah, like me too. That. Me too. I, and here's another part that I noticed, and this stays throughout this album. Yep. The gang vocals, the choruses, and the harmonies are way off throughout this whole album. They not are. as good. Re- I'll tell you. Uh, look, I, I'm going to say now, this right now. Someone's going to say. The cynic is going to say that's because they're all pre-recorded. <laughs> the shit you're hearing now. It's funny. I, I feel bad because we're only on the third song, but we're, we're sharing. We're, we're, I'm glad that you're hearing what I'm hearing because I thought it was just me. 
the choruses of these songs, and we'll get into it as we continue going on. They sound very tired and weak and almost out of tune. The, 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 the choruses don't, they don't, I don't know. It, I don't know how to explain it. And again, maybe this is the, maybe this is that unproduced bootleg sound we're hearing. I don't know. Tom, when I, it's like going to an Eagles concert, then going watching a fucking cover band, do the Eagles. They're not doing the Eagles harmonies. They're not doing the kiss harmonies. They're not in sync. They're not, it's just not the same. No ACE can't do it with as, as, as well as Tommy and the, the other guys. And maybe they don't practice them as much. Maybe ACE can do it, but they just didn't practice it. Well, right. there's another little segment in this song that I found like, Oh, <laughs> like what the fuck, Paul? Go ahead. Call all your friends in the neighborhood. And then Paul goes, hello. <laughs> I, I, but see, I like when he does that, but this one, I was like, ah, I like when he does that, though. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up there, fruitcake? I'm looking for paint work. <laughs> you Arnold on the other line. Hello. Hello. Shout it out loud. Shout it out loud. <laughs> Call all your friends in the neighborhood. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and get the party started. Get the party started. Everybody shout it out. <laughs> And that's when Arnold says, stop shouting. I'm not there. <laughs> oh, God. And stop shouting. I'm not deaf. Anyways. Then we're, then we're in for a treat with song four. Oh, wait, wait. Before he gets to song four. Oh, yeah. More Japanese from Paul. People of Tokyo. Paul says Ace is going to sing. When I count to three. I don't know what kind of a bone. It's a half-ass bone he throws to Ace. I want to hear everyone say Ace. And it's like, and they're like, Ace. Okay, one, two, three, Ace. Ace. Yep. Okay, here you go. <laughs> like, dude, you know Paul when he's into his fucking stage banter and he's preaching up there the, on the altar of rock and roll. Yep. Dude, that was half-ass. Everybody say Ace. Yeah. Ace. Ace. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Woo yeah, exactly. Did you not feel like that was like, that's him cheering on Ace? Yeah. Oh, oh I felt geez. it. Yeah. Ah, thanks a lot, Star Child. That was awesome. I'm really is, ready to rock now. This is great. Why are you making me sing a fucking unmasked song? Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me, comes on Ace, and goes, all right, let's rock. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, what the fuck are you playing this for? <laughs> Is this fucking torpedo, bro? What, which one are we doing? No, I, I like Talk to Me, but even Ace was like, Ace sounded like, why am I singing this right now? Just it's again, a good version. I'll give him credit. I like this version of it. Now, we talked about the fact that Ace has Talk to Me live yeah. on the box set, disc three. So this is like, you know, oh man, like I like I wish I never heard the other one, but I like this version. I like how Ace counts off one, two, three, four. Yep. And it reminds me of unplugged. Yes, exactly. Right? Yep. yep. All yep. right, let's rock. <laughs> <laughs> and now and it's I, talk to me. Think, yeah, and anytime I think of talk to me, I think of the video, I think of Gene like fucking fucking his bass. Remember when he's like, talk to me, and he's like, oh air pumping his own bass yeah he's trying oh. to be like he, he's trying to make it sound like this song is not pop music but i love it i love it and then and gene he, screams out at one point in the middle of the song goes yeah yeah yep <laughs> trying to add trying to add a little balls to it yeah yep and then he says at the end tokyo i just want to talk to you <laughs> and they're all like what <laughs> oh no oh. understand what fucked up drunk men say what does space person say? I don't understand. I, da, da, da. It's, it sounds like, and what the, why he bring oranges? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm pitching. It's a Seinfeld. <laughs> why he bring oranges? <laughs> oh, shit. Poor Ace. Oh, man. So what'd you think of Talk to Me? Look, I like the song. I'm a huge fan of the song. I, I, I think it sounds good live. It was it's it's a night it's nice to have it on a on a on a live official release but yeah. Ace sounds Ace sounds okay it's okay yeah. 
that's how I look at it too. It's a nice live version of a song that we're not used to having. Yeah. Because you have the box set. So, yep. and then Paul, how we doing so far? Tokyo, how we oh. doing so far? Good, yeah, good, good. All right, Paul, enough. This is what I'm saying. This, and I'm like, dude, you're on the fourth song and you are already bugging the shit out of me with your yeah, banter. It, it enough. Like a, it sounds like a fucking inexperienced front man. It's right. I want to be like, dude, this, this you're Paul Stanley. This is Tokyo. They love you. This is the farewell tour. You've been here a billion times. Why are you treating this like this is your first appearance in Tokyo? Oh, like you're so insecure. Like, are, are we okay? Are you, you guys right. having a good time? Fucking yeah, relax, the, our child. The, 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 this is re- really a weird performance by him. Very weird. Song five. They go into it. I love it I, loud. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tokyo, sing it. Gene. Hey, yeah. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. The, the only like big the thing version. I took, the only thing, big thing it, I took away from this was just more Paul speaking Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I put in a, Paul says, Toto Merigato in a mocking Asian voice. Then I get, Merigato, Tokyo, then Tokyo, Tokyo. Yeah, we get it, Paul. You're in fucking Japan. We get it, dude. <laughs> I know you are in our hearts tonight. Are you having a good time? And then more Japanese. Yeah, like <laughs> just <laughs> brutal. Just fucking brutal. All right. So then he says, People, here's a song. I got a feeling we're going to have to call out the firehouse. Song six. Now, this sounds good. This is, this is actually. I, I I thought Detroit Rock City sounded good, and then after that everything was kind of eh. I thought Firehouse sounded good. I thought the band sounded good. I thought Paul sounded good, so I was I was happy with Firehouse. Plus, I love the song to begin with, and they do the big siren thing at the end. So I thought this was a, I thought this was good. So for me, it brings back the nostalgia, and it, you know what yeah. it makes me think? It's missing in the end of the road tour. It's I missing. totally agree. Totally agree. It makes this me think, ne- oh, this fuck, this dude, needs to be it. This needs to be in there. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I will say this is the first time where I think Ace is an addition to this yes. set, to this yeah. to this album. This, this is this is it, it, it's the sixth it's it's the sixth sixth track and it's it's the it's a standout so far for me. Yeah. It. I love the woohoo yeah. Yeah. And just that that nostalgia in the bell ringing. Don't really remember the bell ringing. Yep. But then it makes me remember, uh oh, you know, it's going to come out at the end. But when they go into when it stops and then the drums, and then the siren, and yep. I'm like, yes, siren. But there was no Gene slide bass. Ooh. Ooh. I know that's <laughs> always, yeah, you're right. I, I always heard that first, but this time they would drum siren, which is a little different. I get, I'm so, you could tell how much I love this fucking song. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. And then you can tell at the end that Gene's breathing fire. Oh, yeah. And it really is inexplicable how this is not on the end of the road tour, especially with the nostalgia of the siren, Paul with the fireman hat. Like, it, it should be in there. It should be in yeah. there. Yeah. And then Paul, of course, firehouse. Woo! <laughs> one of the greatest. I love that. Yes. So, no, this is yes. A good one. Yep. Yes. Yes. And then, oh, here we go. Paul. All the way up top. Can you hear you? Yeah, Tokyo, just... let's hear you. Up there on top. You, you may think we can't see you, that we can't hear you, but we feel you deep in our hearts. Dude, it's Tokyo, the sixth song. You are our brothers and our sisters. We got one now for you that asked a question. Comes off an album called Destroyer. Wait, now, at, at some wait. point, people are like, I don't know what's worse. Zeus's impressions of Paul or fucking Paul on this album. So I'm just going to continue. I'm sorry. It's getting it's a little annoying. No, it's okay. Crazy is that, that he's still doing this fucking how you doing shit. We, we love you and you. The carrying, the carrying on was inexplicable to me. And it was surprising. To me, it was ruining the flow because Firehouse was great, and then they go right into "Do You Love Me," which I thought was good. I love that song. I love "Do You Love Me," and I thought it sounded really good. 
But this, you're so distracted by his banter. Yes, I know people. It's Paul Stanley. He's famous for stage banter. We've seen him in concert a million times. But this was like, this was a parody of Paul Stanley banter. It was but almost do, like he was covering up something. I, mean, I don't know what he was covering up, but any, but do you love me? I thought, I thought they sounded good. I thought it was a good version. Yeah. There's a little extra drumming in the beginning. Paul yes. does the usual. He sings the first part, lets the, the audience sing the second part. And then, you know, when I hear this, the other part of the nostalgia that comes in is like, makes me think of end of the road that all of a sudden now you have the montage of the, of all the eras of kiss in the background. When I hear this song and yep. I always feel like the song is almost meant for like, for all the confetti to come down yeah. and the montage in the back. Do you love me? Yep. And then like, you know, and then they have the, um, um, the bells ringing, right? Yeah. Oh, at the end of the, at the end, it's yeah. like the song is kind of yeah. wrapping up. Yeah. But I will say something, Tom, and I wrote this down. I like the song, but the backing vocal slash chorus and stuff is rough. brutal. It's rough. Com- yep. Is compared to end of the road on this. Oh, I agree. It's I agree, brutal. W- which is interesting. Now, when I said I like, I think the band sounds good, but again, we said this earlier. The chorus, the choruses of these songs are all very rough sounding. And Some are better than others. A few of them. And I'm going to say this now. I was going to save it for the end, but I'm going to say it now. This was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. How do the choruses sound better now? I'm not making any statement. I'm not making any. Obs- <laughs> I'm no. I'm I'm not being I'm not making any observation. I'm just making a statement. This was 20 years ago, and they're still playing these songs now, and they sound better. Okay. Can you imagine them trying to get Ace off his ass to fucking work on this shit? No. You've read the books. We've all read the books. We've all seen the stories. We've all yep. seen where Paul's like at the end, they're all just fucking like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm yep. done. We're let's end it. We're fucking this isn't getting better. Yep. I just want to be done. Like they're all just fucking mailing it in by this point. Yep. They weren't working on their game to make sure. Th- and this is the problem, they'll say. Well, look how it was then. There is a fine line between practicing and being picture perfect and having everything being so sterile with right. no imp- improvisation. improvisation. Thank you. Yep. yep. At all, right? This right. is what it's become now. It's so sterile. But anyways, yep. um, he ends it again. So far, everyone having a pretty good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. And Tokyo. And then Paul runs off a bunch of Japanese cities that they've been to before. You know, <laughs> and then, of course, just in case someone has a little rock and roll pneumonia. Calling oh, Dr. Love. And on number eight. Love the song. I think Gene sounds great. The chorus again, eh, it's okay. Band sounds great. Chorus sounds great. Solo is okay. Ace is okay here. But at the end of the song, Paul, this is the sound of the animal. And then he howls. What the fuck is that? What does that have anything to do with? You just sang calling Dr. Love. And you say, this is the sound of the, I've never ever heard him use that line on in stage banter before ever this is the sound of the animal and he goes ow like like ow louder ow i like that my kind of sushi people i didn't know what he said i don't <laughs> I, I i don't know what what is the sound of the if he if 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 he has said that before i missed it but i don't know what I, that I, has to do with anything i don't but i either. will take a step back Gene with Dr. Love, Tokyo, let me see your hands. Yep. I like it. Yep. Eric kills it on this song. Eric sounds I awesome. Actually, yeah, I actually said the backing vocals on this is finally reminiscent of classic Kiss. And it's okay. Ace nails the solo on this, yeah. just like it, the album. Nails Ace it. Did, this was a good solo for Ace. Yes. Yes. Yep. I, I agree. fucking love the version of this on this album. Loved yep. it. I yep. really did. Then after his fucking... I don't know, Tarzan routine. They go into track nine, Heaven's on Fire. With a ridiculous introduction where I just have written down here, settle down, Paul. <laughs> uh, I, it's just, he does it, I think, three times, three or four times. That, oh, 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 it, it's actually perfect. It he sounds nailed. great. It sounds he great. Nailed. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, he, he's pulling it off. He's pulling it off. 
but the chorus. This may be one of the worst choruses on this entire album. Horrible. You notice you notice the theme with this album so far? Paul doesn't sing the choruses? No. My my thing is the older the song is and the more Ace has played it in his career, the better he sounds. Oh, the oh. newer or less times he's played it, the worse the chorus and everything else. Oh, like, yeah. It's almost like Ace, like, I don't give a fuck about this song. This chorus was brutal. This is one of the worst choruses in the entire the concert. Yep. Yeah, I have that in. Paul's voice is great. Yikes. It's just flat. The backing vocals and chorus is brutal. It's really, it's very flat. Yeah, it's it's rough. Yep. And Gene sounds like he's underwater, or tranquilized on this too. Yeah. It sounds like uh, he's not even into it too. And that's nope. I never hear that about Gene or say that. Nev- no, never. Paul does the ow screech. I just Tokyo, clap your hands. Come on, Tokyo, a little louder. Come on, Tokyo, a little like shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my but- God. But no other breathing goes right into track number 10. They do let me go rock and roll. Musically, it sounds pretty good. Again, vocals, they're not great. Yeah. Now I'm on record as saying I don't like this song. Here's a song where I notice a stark difference with Ace and Tommy. Mm-hmm. On the on the end of the road, Tommy absolutely rips this solo. Now, mm-hmm. this is one of the oldest songs they performed. This is off the Ace than, cult. This is off. This is off harder than hell. Ace should be burning this up, and to me, he does not. So it, it's you know, and then and then at the end of the song, you get Eric Singer standing up saying, "Tokyo Kiss loves you." Yeah. I was like, okay, you know, it's kind of like the Peter Chris thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I don't know. First thing I noticed. Gene screams, let me go rock and roll. He never does that. It's always rock and roll. Right? So he never puts that part in the beginning. Good point. Uh, You know, I just at least I don't remember it. How's that? Um Ace is kicking it in the beginning. I I think he's doing pretty good. Yeah, the rhythm he the rhythm he does. Yeah, Yeah. you pick up on it's not as tight. Uh Gene yells, Eric Singer. (laughs) <laughs> right before the solo, Eric is killing it on the drum fills, then screams, Ace Frehley! And then Ace tears it up some more, and then break down, and just Eric drumming, and then Gene's bass comes in for a little bit, that and then good. some guitar, yep. and then Eric says that, you know, like you said, Tokyo. I like that little difference in the end there, but you're right, the, you know, the vocals and the, the guitar is just not as tight as we're used to. Yep. <sighs> I and know Paul again with the Domo Rigato. Does Just, everyone feel good? Put your hands in the air and wave them. Yeah, I, I, it's I don't know. I was waiting for kid and play. When I say make some, you say noise. Make, make some noise. When I say make some, make some noise. Make some noise. <laughs> make some noise. noise. Uh, that's anyways. That's my kid in play impression, Tom. I had to get it in there. Yeah, I, I don't understand. <laughs> he wants the fucking people to wave shit in the air. Paul goes, good, good, good. See everyone feeling so good. When he when he kept repeating good, I was like, I'm returning this record. I don't want that. I'm canceling my order. <laughs> hey, baby. What the fuck was that? Oh, God. Ace wants to sing another song for you now. He's going to tell you all about this one. I am. <laughs> I was waiting for him to go. What? You talking to me? I'm uh, is that what I do? <laughs> 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 he walks up. You guys know this one. He's called Shock Me. Sounds like he says, We guys know. We guys know this song is called Shock Me. I couldn't understand what he was saying. And then Shockmate comes in, song number 11. I said for Ace, his voice is Ace good, meaning like his voice isn't great, but in for Ace, it's pretty good here. I don't think it's bad. And, I, you know, Eric is killing it on the drums. Ace says Tokyo. Then the solo, the songs. Did, but after the traditional ending of the song, it, it extends to like an outro solo. 
do I really need nine more minutes of the song? When I'm looking at it, I'm like, what the fuck is going to happen for the next nine minutes? <laughs> Couple things here. Shock me. <laughs> what is that in the chorus? What is that? Shock me. Like you, he's, like he's confused. Like shock it, you like, it's like, shock I, me. it's like, I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> no, like, no, it's what, like, what are you doing? Fuck me. Fuck you. Fuck you. Shock me. <laughs> that's who shock Maybe that's what it is. Cause he's in Japan. <laughs> fuck <laughs> you. Shock fuck me. That was fast. <laughs> Fuck me, fuck you. <laughs> it's awesome, it's awesome. You're so funny. Yeah, you know. So very sexy yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Can I have autograph? Of course. Your name is? Fuck me. Oh, behave, baby. <laughs> yes. Now, your name is? Fuck me. You kiss your mother with that mouth? <laughs> fuck me. It exists. Oh, I see. Your name is Spook Me. <laughs> you want to drink? Yes, of course. But you know, I, I I have a private bar in the back that you're more than welcome to Here use. Here you go. But Spook Me, that was fast. Spook you. Oh, you're going the right way for a smack bottom, and I don't care who knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Austin. What? What? Are you? This is my twin sister. Her name is Spook You. Spook You. And then, and then, like you said, I went and looked this up. Shock me on a live two. Ah, I did the same thing. I did. Is 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 five minutes and fifty one seconds long, including that legendary guitar solo. Shock me on this is thirteen minutes and sixteen <laughs> seconds long. Just Mine enough time. 14. On the CD, oh, just enough time for you to kill yourself in the middle of the guitar solo. <laughs> this is the most, dude. This is when I don't know what happened here or who thought this was a good idea. The only thing I thought of was I feel terrible for the audience right now having to sit through this. Why do I have this on a CD? Like, do I need nine more extra minutes? It goes to silence at some point. And he's going Tokyo rocks, and then something. Pictured 2001. I have no idea what the fuck he says. And then back to the solo, like he's like blowing shit up stuff, which doesn't translate to a CD or an album. And then Paul, of course, Ace Frehley, lead guitar. And I put was... 13 minutes on a live two. It was five and a half. <laughs> uh, that is unbelievable. Like, like I, I honestly, when I was listening to this and I saw. You know the, the 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 progress bar on the song. I'm like, oh, I'm like this. This must be something wrong because the song's almost over. And it says there's eight minutes left. I'm like, they can't be eight minutes. I, when, when this came out on Friday, I was out in the yard cutting the grass, and I, ha- I had this playing. I literally cut my front lawn <laughs> during the guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> Went inside, grabbed the drink, took a shit, came on, and he goes and. Jack me! And I caught myself. I'm like, wait, how is this still going on? He's not even doing anything. Oh my god! And it broke. <laughs> and it rent this. And it broke my heart in two. It broke more <laughs> than your heart because I love shock. Shock me on a live two is my favorite version because it's got that extended solo and it's it's magnificent. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. Thirteen minutes. Thirteen minute fucking. Now I'm sure there's gonna be the one or two Ace Cult people. Fucking that's Ace is ripping it. I love that shit. Oh, great, good. Go buy good. fucking Joe Satriani's albums then, and, and go listen to fucking instrumentals all day. But the problem, but the problem, Zeus, is that there wasn't even really a lot of riffing. It was like it was like a lot of like noise shit. It wasn't like Joe Satriani or even Ingve. I know it's sacrilegious. I can I know. listen to Paul do the hundred thousand years. I'm sorry to take like I can deal with that stuff. Yeah, me too. And he preaching. Okay. Yep. I can't deal with drum solos and I can't deal with fucking guitar solos. I don't care who it is in the middle of any legendary album. I can't. I just, yeah, to me, it's such a fucking waste. I'm okay. sorry. It doesn't work. Yep. Okay. So yep. after this, Paul says, a couple years ago, we went back to the studio to do an album, and that album was called 
and he does the whole circus, yep. circus. And I say, welcome to the show, Tokyo. And everyone's like, sayonara, song sucks. We are ah, da, 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 da. No psycho circus. No, yeah, no, no. And they're like, fuck off. Ah, the song sucks. Don't play it. Paul was pushing it down everyone's throat back then. And then they closed the album with track 12, Psycho Circus. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, I don't mind this song. Uh, I know, I know you you hate it. I don't mind it. I thought this version was actually okay. I I, I thought the band I thought the band sounded pretty good. I, I I don't mind this song. I think it's I think performed live. It's pretty good. Um, and this version was was okay for me. The song still sucks. I put okay, uh, but it's a normal version of the song. They don't they perform it correctly. Yeah, uh, there's no reason for Paul to say Tokyo. You people are beautiful in the middle no, of the there, song. No, there isn't. And then again to end the song with. You know, Tokyo, welcome to the show. Feel so good. Feel so good. Like, what? Just, the yeah. Fuck, dude. It wouldn't end. This is side one. I know. <laughs> I know. So then we start side two or disc two or whatever you want to call it. Wait a minute. How many people right now go, do you guys even like Kiss? <laughs> I lo- look, we've said this before. I love Kiss. And I think our, I think our commentary here is coming from the how much we love the band and how underwhelmed to put it nicely we are so far with this with this album yeah side two you're correct tom uh this one you ought to know and paul start, start singing it with the crowd track one lick it up sounds all right again chorus is sleepy sleepy is the word i use the chorus is the cor- they sound bored they sound bored tom i put paul uh paul starts off with don't want to wait, and the music starts off, but the chorus is so off again. I put, oh yeah, even the riff isn't as crisp. It's a little slower. I think "Lick It Up" is probably one of the best riffs they have. Like it's just, oh, I know, off. it's off. You know, you know, Tokyo, clap your hands. I want you. I need you. I want you. I need you. That shit comes right on in. And I actually like that stuff. That's right. Clap your hands, people. Come on, people. Yep. <sighs> I know. Yeah, I don't have much to say about that other than it was just eh. Yeah. And then you can tell that it says lick it up, Gene bass solo. The track is 554. It's not really Gene's bass solo in this. It's not much to it. It's it's I think it's the beginning. It's the beginning of God of Thunder. Is it, yeah, yeah, it's the brum, brum, yeah. like the chain, like the thing yep. like that. The, the blood spitting shit, right? Yeah. yeah. And the blood's gonna come out. Yep. It's just not the same hearing it on a CD. And then Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. And then the famous dun 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 dun. And I'm like, fuck yeah. When I hear that riff, I'm yep. like, okay, now here we go. And God of Thunder, track number two. Let me hear ya. It's at a little bit of a slower pace than I'm used to. It's even slower than Alive 2, I think. Gene's I can't hear. He always says, I can't hear you in the middle of the riffs in God of Thunder. And But at the 445 mark, why the fuck am I listening to a drum solo? Wait, okay. when does, like, I don't remember God of Thunder as a drum solo. No. The drum solo is always during 100,000 years. Like, what the fuck is that doing in the middle? Like, why do I have this shit on an album? It's just, oh, you know, just Eric Singer on the drums. And then Gene comes back and finishes the vocals. The mic was messed up for that part, though, when Gene comes back. There was some fucking little hiccup there, if you notice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. It. I love the song, but when you add... Another four and a half minutes of just nonsense. Like, it's not the track I want to go to because now I have to fucking skip half of it and fast forward it. Like, this is the shit that I want to see. Like, make it a separate part. Don't have it as the same track number because now I'm fucking stuck listening to this shit and I can't fast forward it. Okay. So now we, this is where we differ. I think Gene sounds okay. I'm a drum guy. I love drummers. I actually think. I'm, drum solos can get kind of boring sometimes for me. Oh, I think insane. Eric sounds. I think Eric sounds fucking fantastic. I I like. I en- I found myself surprisingly enjoying this drum solo. Oh. It went on it went on a little too long. I'll give you. It didn't need to be that long. 
but I thought he was doing some fun, interesting things. I love the drums, so I love listening to them. But yeah, it's weird to have a drum solo with God of Thunder. That's not usually what they do. So uh, it doesn't work. No. Well, let's hand it back over to Paul. No, let's when not. When you're down in the Fuck. dumps and you need something to bring you up, people. And then have her. people. Yep. There's only one drink that's going to do it for you, people. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Song number three, Cold Cold, Gin. Cold Gin. And the only thing that saves this song is Ace singing the second verse of it, which I thought was a nice surprise. That's the, I, I thought that was great. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> that was it. Other than that, I don't need to hear Cold Gin again. But I thought that was, a, when I was listening, I'm like, oh, shit, that's Ace. That's pretty cool, him singing it. He wrote it, so it's good to hear him sing it. Yeah, and there's a part in the song when the second verse of A sings and he says, Wow, the corner at the wicker door. Oh, yeah, he sounded like he was fucking pie eyed during this. <laughs> he sounds like he was yeah. just at the liquor store. Yes. It's at the yes. wicker store, by the yep. way. Yep. Wicker store. <laughs> yep. He sounds yep. like he's hammered. There's pauses after the solo. Paul screams, Woo! And then Paul sings, Baby, baby, baby. What? Yeah. Very weird. Very weird. Oh, boy. And it doesn't get better after that. Goes, well, right afterwards, it goes right into 100,000 years. Track number four. Now, we have been commenting on choruses. Not just the chorus. Paul sounds horrible during this entire song. He is all over the place. He is making this song Something that it's not from the studio version or even the alive version. He's singing in different ranges and different tones. He's like, he's creating a, a new version of the song and none of it sounds good. I think one of the most ridiculous things during this is when he's st- in the middle of a song, he starts handing out t shirts to the audience. <laughs> he's fucking firing the t shirts off like, and I found NBA jams going off. Well, and we and I found out through uh, our good friend Kurt Gooch in oh. his book, Kiss Alive Forever, that Paul actually had a t shirt cannon gun. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying on, on this, right. And that it was actually scrapped after this because of insurance issues. They were afraid. I'm like, dude, are you at like a Harlem Globetrotters game? You're shooting fucking t-shirts into the crowd. What are you doing? This is horrible. And to hear you talk about shooting t-shirts into the crowd. What are you doing? Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. And that's why 100,000 years is 10 minutes long. And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because Paul has to shoot t-shirts into the crowd. Just and, fucking brutal. And then just the preaching. The preaching even isn't as good. Just and brutal. You, you know, he does the do you feel all right four times. And he, he says, I know. Do you people have Tokyo? How about some t-shirts? I'm like, really? <laughs> like, fuck? I, I was, when I heard that, when I heard that, I literally stopped. I'm like. Are you hawking t shirts? You, you, you're, sh- you're sh- firing t shirts into the eye? What, did, what are we doing here? Horrible. This guy's on fire. I feel yeah, like exactly. it's like an NBA jam. Yeah. NBA jam. Yeah. It just, it, Paul then goes into Good people of Tokyo, are you having a good time? The first time we came to Japan, they told us we were very, very big. We didn't know what that meant. We wanted to give you the greatest show we could. We came to your country and we played Budokan. Oh my you God. people made us feel at home. You are our family. People, tonight I stand on the stage so far oh. away from my family, my friends, my brothers and sisters. It would be an honor if I could come out there and sing for you. If you want me to come on, I will... But I need you to hear you say yeah And he says it three no, times No, no, <laughs> stay out Oh, Throw the oranges <laughs> at him <laughs> Oh, this man, he will not shut up I don't want him out here No, 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 no Then he says, well, my goodness, Tokyo It's a long way back to the shores of America But tonight, I'm flying out I'm coming to see ya God. <laughs> And then obviously Love Gun begins And you can visualize him flying out In the middle of the fucking crowd Yep. Now, 
You know what's funny about? First of all, I think the band sounds great on this. This is a this is this yeah. is a good song for me. I think Ace sounds good. Yeah. I think his I think he plays great. I know Love Gun doesn't really have a a, a true solo. It kind of has that little outro thing that he does, which I thought sounded great. I think Paul sounded good. The band sounded good. But what struck me, and it's not like we didn't know this, but you know, sometimes when you see these things and you listen to these things, it's like, oh shit. Again, this was twenty years ago. They're still doing this. Everybody was like, "Oh, end of the road. We're gonna do this unbelievable new stage show, and we're gonna it's gonna be, we're gonna go out in a blaze of glory." No, you're not. You're doing the same fucking thing you've done for over twenty years. You fly out into the middle of the crowd and do Love Gun. Yep, it's stale sorry, as, it's stale as hell. I'm like, and I, and again, I knew we knew that, but listening to this, I was like, "Wow, like wow." It's not just the set list. No, you that's why that's why when we do drafts and we do like or like live concerts or the real kiss alive, we always do the real kiss alive. Oh, this is when Gene Smith's blood. Okay, this right. is when uh you know Paul flies out to the crowd. Oh, yep. this is when Ace shoots fucking rockets. Oh, yep. this is when they do in the middle of a hundred thousand years. Oh, this like it's just Yep. You gotta have these fucking little planted little segments throughout the the concert. Yep. Yep. Right. But you forget, you forget because you're so engrossed into what's going on now, what's going on in the last few years with end of the road and all the little tricks and stunts they're doing. And you're like, fucking hey, man, they were doing this 20 years ago. Like this is none of this is a novelty. None of it is. Yeah. Can you imagine me going up to like rush and be like, okay, so when are you guys flying out to the crowd? But wh- who's going like, to shoot the fucking rockets in the sky? We're going to Pearl Jam and be like, yeah. so who's spitting out blood tonight? What? Yeah. What? What are you talking about? What? <laughs> so yeah, but I thought I thought the song sounded good. I thought Ace sounded good. Yes, um, I thought they fine. I think Ace nails the solo. I thought Paul's voice was fine. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the strangest thing. Yes. Song number six. They go right into the guitar for "I Still Love You," but it's not "I Still Love You." It's the nope. intro to "Black Diamond." Yes. And yep. then the song goes into "I Still Love You." But the only one performing on I Still Love You is Paul. Is Paul. Very so weird. It's so fucking weird. So Black Diamond goes right into it. And at the lyric got to make you see on the first time he says that part, there is some major fuck up, like a guitar slash bass burp. Yep. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Somebody yes. farted. I don't know. If somebody. Right. Did the- <laughs> And they missed it on the fucking. Oh, is that what I did? I thought my mic was off. Sorry, huh? but it the sounds f- like the fucking from Living in Sin Jeans bass. Wow! <laughs> 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 Listen to that first line when he says it, guys. There's something fucked up that happens there. I don't know if someone's dropping ass, or Dude, or the, the fucking breaks a bass line. Uh, fucking, I, I don't know what happens there. The, the I Breaks still is, love uh, you thing. The I still love you thing. When I saw it on the track list, I was like, okay, this is a weird addition to the set list. Mm-hmm. And then when you hear how it was put into the set, it's like, what the, what is this man? Like, cause it starts off with that intro to black diamond. And then it goes into, I still love you. And you, you said it, it's, it's just Paul. I'm like, what are we, what is happening? This is, yeah, a I don't weird. remember this ever seen, uh, this uh, kiss do this live myself. No, and I'm sure no. other people are like, oh yeah, they did it through this tour and this. But like, I That's never fine. saw. It. So I I'm never not used to hearing this. I'm like, what the fuck is this? No, it's no, just I... all this guitar. His voice is good. It's yeah. just not unplugged good. That's what I said. I said Paul sounds great, and then I wrote, but why? Now I didn't mind it. I thought it was nice because you know I thought Paul sounded really good, and then but I like how the it. Purpose then, of that, this though, I don't uh, get it. If you, it's weird because you don't it's see like a melody like. You, you, you I still love you slash black diamond. Like, yeah, you don't, but you don't see kiss doing that a lot with their own music. No, that's, it's kind of, they're improvising again. Almost, I know that, which is, right? which, which is, is like, which is how weird. dare they, <laughs> but then it went, but then it went seamlessly into black diamond, which I thought was kind of cool. Yes. Um, you know, before they hit it part, there's another weird sound on that too. And you know, you, you could tell this is a bootleg cause it would have been cleaned up. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Eric can sing this well, but he can't sing this Peter well. And that's why I like 
it's just not the same hearing anybody else sing Black Diamond for me. It's just not, and I can't. And I I'm totally not saying they do a bad version of it, but it's just not the same. You know what I mean? I, it's I, like I, to, I, to, I, I totally but agree. You know, with you. you could have the better version of something. So you're like, all right, well, I'll take this. But man, I really wanted that shirt at the concert. Yeah. But I'll take that one's pretty good. No, man, I, 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 I hear, I hear what you're saying. That being said, I think Eric sounds amazing. It's not Peter, but I think Eric does an awesome job. Yeah, um, I think he does a good job. I don't think it's yeah. I just, I just, I need the raspiness, and he just can't do it. Yeah, uh, I get Paul, you. Tokyo, we love you. You don't want to go home, do you? People of Tokyo, all night you've been looking at us. People, take a look at yourselves, Tokyo. You are beautiful. Okay, whatever. Is the show almost over, Paul? Can we go now? <laughs> And Don got it. People like us. <laughs> That's what I'm, it's like. Is he doing therapy up there? What the fuck is this? Daily affirmations with Stuart Stanley. <laughs> I don't know. And then here's one you ought to know. It goes and it goes like this. And he goes right into track number eight. I was made for loving you. Here are my comments. Paul sounds too high. Vocals are a mess. Chorus is bad. Those are my comments for this. This song is a fucking high speed train wreck. Yeah, I I just I was look, I have I tried so hard to get excited for this and to enjoy this. I was so excited to play it because I was really intrigued by the lineup. It's just bad. This just sounded, um, this was a mess to me. So I, uh, this is one we differ, buddy. Okay, I, go ahead. Sounds That's great. Fine. I like the solo too. I thought the chorus was great for them. Uh, then okay. at the end, Paul says, good night. I thought this was, came off well. I, I was surprised that, you know, Ace, because I'm like, how much did he really play this on, you know, Dynasty? And then, right. you know, the Unmasked tour. Yeah. So maybe he did play enough of it yeah. and it was a hit. So they were probably really playing it. I, I thought he hit it. I thought okay. he really hit it out of the park. I thought they did a good job with it. But yeah. then, you know, they end with the Paul again with the Dorigato shit. We've always loved you. We always will love you. Sometimes you may not understand what we're saying up here. It doesn't matter. What's a, What matters is what's in your soul. What's in your heart. You are wonderful people. And you deserve to have a good time. Are you having a good time tonight? No. <laughs> what the fuck what? kind of shit is this i don't know i don't know what's happening here with him i don't get it yeah but. i mean obviously these are the on course so there's a stop and they make him think they're going to come off this do the same thing and yeah. then they say all oh, number the last song the closing song all oh, we can leave you with this rock and roll all night paul says something again in japanese i have no idea track nine last song Ace sings the second verse. I was like, yes, I love that shit. Love that shit. Back to Gene for the third voice. Paul says Tokyo for the millionth time. Ace's solo rips towards the end. Paul starts singing. Come on, clap your hands. And then he sings it and hey, hey. I don't know what the fuck he did. Tells the crowd to sing it with them. I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Come on, people. Paul has to, and this is what I was asking earlier. And grace himself with the most popular song. He has to rap the most popular song around him. Yep. It's not your song. It's no. not your thing. Why no. do you have to do all the shit about this and and, and make and do the chorus back and forth? That's Gene's song. But you but you just answered your own question because the biggest song in their catalog, the show, the song that closes every show, is a Gene song. So he has to try to find a way to steal some thunder. That's it. Yeah, it's it. yeah. You're right. Absolutely right. He 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 can't. It needs to be their song. Correct. And it's not. It's not Gene's song. Right. 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 It just and I you know I've thought about this before, but like it just more sticks out for me. Like listening to him do this and then trying to do the preaching in the middle and all this. But it, it's not your fucking song. Ends with fireworks. Tokyo, never forget us. We'll never forget you. Tokyo, Dorigato, good night. Tokyo and people for the 100 millionth time. Yep. 
Yeah, it's. I don't really have too much more to say about it. I mean, that's. I feel like we're. <laughs> I feel like we've been bagging on it enough, but that's. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Overall thoughts. Just, just disappointed, and I and I mean that sincerely. I don't mean that in like a comic type way. I'm just disappointed. I don't know why this was released. I don't know who thought that this sounded good. I know it's off the soundboard. It's supposed to be a bootleg, but it is released officially by Kiss. I don't know. Just bummed. I'll be honest. I was just bummed because I was fired up for it, and I just it just didn't sound good to me. It was just a it was a bummer. It makes me think, Tom. The reason this was picked has nothing to do with the music or anything else. There's some sort of thing in the background. There's like a financial or end of the road kind of reason that this was picked. I it agree. Makes no sense. It's you know, even if someone says you guys are full of shit, you're fucking bagging on this way too much, way too hard. Okay, then tell me why they picked this. It's a it's a mystery. Why why would you pick one of the most rare lineups of Ace when Ace is not really at the top of his game? And and the bigger thing to me, and we've already said this, why would you pick a, a show from 20 years ago when the band sounds better now, which is just gonna raise questions? Well, why does the band sound better now? How does a band sound better 20 years later than this? Because now you're just going to start opening yourself up to that criticism of, oh, great, backing tracks, etc. Which, again, I don't care. You don't care. We've, we're on record. We don't care. This is just an odd recording. Why not drop something from 1981 or something from what? Like, this just is weird to me. I don't get it. It doesn't sound good, because, and it's a weird lineup. I don't because know. Because in my head, they have Ace in their back pocket. They know Ace's number. And Ace has already told them, I won't come back until you give me this. And they have the number and they're giving him, they're lowballing him now, but they know Peter, they're like, fuck off. You're not coming back. And Peter's the one who's, I'm not getting into the other fucking shit that's going on about rumors yep. about the A&E stuff and Peter and them fighting. But Ace is the most likely one to come back. That's why I think this is coming out. I agree with that's you. That's going to be the set list because that's going to be the lineup. Those four. And they're like, Peter, fuck off. You want to take, we're not paying you the same as Ace. Ace, you believe that? I don't give a fuck. Pay me my money and I'm coming. Sorry, Peter. I, That's why. I thought I thought of that also. I thought of that also. I said, this is coming out right, right before the A&E biography, right before the show starts taking off again in August, right when the Ace rumors are at their peak. So you're right. It Now, that could be wishful thinking or, look, we've said this before. Kiss, specifically Paul and Gene, never do anything by accident. Yep. Never. They never do anything by accident. So releasing this random lineup, this random show, there's got to be some ulterior motive behind it. And that could be it. The, the ace thing is probably the missing piece. Could also be maybe timed. Remember, they picked this originally pre-COVID. So this would have came out in the middle towards the end of this. Correct. Maybe hint, hint. Here it comes. That's also right? true. Yep. So, uh, I'm just telling you because it makes no point. Is there like, uh, like you put this the first one out of a series? Is it going to blow you away because of the set list? It's going to blow you away from the lineup. Is going to blow you away from their performance? Not really for any of that. And so, why would you? And why would you introduce? Why would you open up a, an off the soundboard series with your current? drummer but your former spaceman while your current spaceman is still in the band none of it makes sense yep. unless there's some deal with ace yeah so all this being said i bought this album mm -hmm. me too i will buy the next one i will buy the next one yep. it doesn't give anybody the right to tell me shut the fuck up and don't say something negatively Right. Because I bought it doesn't mean I have to sit there and get delusional and tell myself, no, no, this is really exceptional. I buy it. I listen to it because it's my favorite band. Of course, I'm going to listen to mm -hmm. it. Of course, I'm going to buy it. Even if I heard reviews like mine and I, I still would buy it because it's my because this is my band. So 
I just wish, and as much as we've been kind of, I don't know if we can say really negative, I, I still don't think it's bad. It's just, I expect better. I think that's, that's the point, Zeus. I bought it. I'll probably go back and listen to it again. I was disappointed. I was so excited for it mm-hmm. that I was disappointed. It doesn't mean I'm never going to listen to it again. I will. I'll listen to it again. I'll probably listen to it a lot of times. But here's the thing, jerky, is that, yes, these are our opinions. And I'm very cautious about commenting on other people's opinions. That being said, I'm going to do that right now because I've seen people on Twitter and on Facebook, and God bless you to each his own. The people that are raving about this, I truly, I don't get that. I, I, I don't know if you're listening to this with just your ears or if you're listening to this with your heart and your kiss pajamas on and you want this to be fantastic because it's not fantastic. And if you think it is, God bless you. But I don't know how somebody can listen to this with their ears and and think that this is a fantastic recording because it's just not, in my opinion. That's my opinion. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It, it it's it's a a live album of Kiss. I have them. Yeah. I have plenty of them. Yep. And I will buy the next one. Yep. I hope the next one's better. Me too. Um it is what it is. I hope that everyone will still give it a listen, go out and buy it. It's just not as good as I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. And Agreed. expected. Agreed. Um the other part to this is it almost makes me it makes me look at this. I'm like, Jesus Christ. The fucking like nothing's really changed. It's the same fucking shit. That that's <laughs> one of the things that's <laughs> the one of the thing, that, I get discouraged that, about it. That's one of the things that stood out to me. Like, yeah, there's a couple di- couple differences with the set list, but for the most part, it's the same. And you, get, you still get the same the same thing with Love Gun and the same thing with God of Thunder and the same thing with So yeah, yeah. Uh, it kind of it's funny because it had the opposite effect. Instead of getting me fired up and enthusiastic, I was like, ah, it was a it was a bummer. I've used that word before. It was a bummer, which is weird. I don't know. I shouldn't be feeling that way, but I did. This is what I feel like. If you're going to put out a first time in a while live album, give me something that I don't have. Blow me away. But you don't have to blow me away. What's on here that I don't have live? Yep. I agree. I'm looking at it. What do I not have live? Why would you not start this off with something from like 1984 or 1979? 7980. Because there are plenty of songs that are not released that they did on their tours. Something like all the fucking tracks that they did from the uh, solo albums or tracks they did on Unmasked that aren't live, that are live, that are out there. Did you notice... Did 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 you notice something that stuck out like a sore thumb? Did you notice Beth is not in the set list? Yeah. Interesting. I don't think anybody missed it. I thought that no, I but I thought that was interesting that Beth is not in the set list. So something told them to bring it back. I don't know or, who. Or did they not have the permission to put Beth on a new album again? That could also be it. But it's and not a new, but it, but but it's not a new album. It's a recording of a show from twenty years I know. ago. I don't know the legal ramifications. I don't. Yeah, you're but right. I'm just you're thinking right. like right. maybe they want they had to pay him or something more or extra or anything like that. And they're like, fine, we'll pick an error from this when you weren't on it. Maybe this is <laughs> here. You go more conspiracy shit. Maybe because of the A and E shit and all the other stuff and Peter was being cranky. They're like, fine, you want to be a fucking dick? We'll put up more Kiss history. Hey, we're celebrating the history of Kiss. Guess what? Here's a great album, and Peter Chris ain't on it. Yeah, but that doesn't, up. you know what? You you bring up a good point. That might not be a conspiracy. You might be dead on. Maybe they're like, yeah, hey, Peter, fuck off. Your song's not even on here. And look how everyone's loving this album. And you're not even yeah. on it. And people are used to it. They just want Ace. You could, that could be it. And that could, you could have nailed it right there. I don't yep. know. So, Tom, we've only done one uh, previous live album. Yep. Okay. And then that one, we named our top five songs each tracks. Okay. Okay. What were our favorites? And okay. one honorable mention. Yep. You want to go first or should I? You can start off. Okay. Number five for me, Colgen. Okay. I like number it. Fi- I like number the version. F- number five for me, even though it was kind of abbreviated and it, it, it got its own track number on it, so it counts. I still love you. I thought it was interesting to hear that. 
Yeah, it's different. And I thought he sounded great on it. Yeah, although it's not even the whole track, and I also right. like Eric's drumming on it. Right. But yep. Number four for me, this is the biggest probably one uh, that me and you had a difference on. I liked I Was Made for Loving You on this. Okay. I like this version. All right. Number four for me, and this is, again, so another will differ on this one. This is primarily because of the drum solo, and that's God of Thunder with the drum solo. <laughs> ah, da, 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 da. Yeah. I couldn't put it on because of that fucking. Okay. Okay. Made, what made it to a, a ridiculously length song yep. um number three for me oh, i miss this song firehouse bingo that's my number three as well yep like, firehouse how can you go wrong with the siren god yep. knows i love those sirens yep number two for me i think it's a great version of rock and roll all night a singing he gets a line in there that's my okay. number two uh number two for me was cold gin and that's because of ace getting that second uh that second verse and do you know what that this all this means it's all because of the fucking small little variety the little yep. fucking drop of something different and we're like that's what oh my god it's that's where look, yeah look at the things we're picking yeah right yep number one for me and i know you're probably going to be surprised i picked this i think they hit this one out of the park for some reason and i'm surprised because you know, from the track record of doing these songs, and that was calling Doctor Love. I think the vocals were on on this one. I think Ace's solo, he nailed it, and Eric is killing it. I just love this version. All right, well, all right, it, it was good. It was good. Number one for me, the novelty of a song that I love being sung by Ace. That's talk to me. Oh, yep. Really? Yep. Yes. So I'm not, I I'm not going to, I'm not, my uh, honorable mention, Tom. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's number one because it's the best sounding, but it's, I no. love the song and it's nice to have it on an official recording. Yeah. And I like it. Don't you talk to me. Exactly. Yes. What's your honorable mention, Tom? My honorable mention was actually calling Dr. Love. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. So those are our top five tracks. What we usually do is compare, um, album covers and then the album. When we do compilations or we do regular albums. Now, this is our second live album. Mm-hmm. Tom, Kiss Alive 3's album cover, this. This is last. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing There's nothing to it. Yeah. I'm the same thing. Alive yep. 3 and then this uh, for album cover. All right. Kiss Alive 3 album or this? This is last. <laughs> Let's just be, let's just, let's get it out of the way. We only did two albums. So this is number two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is number five for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, if it, it could be lower two than two, I'd put it lower than two. Yeah. Not even fucking close. No. Um, even though they have 21 tracks and I'm not going by anything other than like, if I can take one album with me, which one Correct. I want. Correct. And I don't care yep. that they have more tracks. I'm taking yep. this live three the yep. production and everything else too. You mm-hmm. got to take that into effect. And yep. even though one's a non makeup lineup, that there's no kiss alive three. Oh, oh, the vocals are off. Oh, the chorus. Oh, they're doing it different. Like, sounds amazing. Oh, oh my God. Me, yep. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm sure the feedback for this one is going to be interesting. This is going to be one of those episodes. We've done this one or two times and in, in, since we started the show. We've at, we've, we've, we're, we might actually have to put a disclaimer in the show notes. Yeah. Be you know, caution strong opinions ahead. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Agreed. Absolutely. Yep. So, Tom, what we do next is this. Hi, this is Ed Spansberg of ClickTeaShop.com, and for all your shouted out loud cast gear and merchandise, please visit ClickTeaShop.com. At Click T Shop, you can find lots of Kiss inspired t shirt designs, plus mugs, hats, hoodies, pillows, and all new fine art selections. And now, here's your question of the week. All right, our question of the week comes from good friend of the show, the great Gary Cap. Ooh. Yeah, we love Gary. I'm going to paraphrase his question a little bit in the interest of time because we know this has been a marathon episode but that's yeah. what new new kiss albums deserve that time so i'm going to paraphrase his question a little bit and he says if you had to pick 
one Kiss album, including a live album, but not including a compilation, to a Kiss beginner, which one would you choose? Somebody says, I, I, I've heard of Kiss, but I don't really know anything about them. What, what, what album? We've done this with some of our friends. They're like, oh, I like this band, but what, what's, what album should I start with? I'm sorry. I know it's cliche. Destroyer. Really? Even with That's some of those weird, even with some of those weird songs. What's the weird song? Well, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like, like great expectations or like sweet pain or like this. Sweet okay. pain is not like weird. It's just yeah. maybe you like it, but it, even critically, it has the story in the beginning, right? The car and right. everything. And the music is just, first of all the, the 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 first three songs right in a row, and even the production of it. Mm-hmm. And how does the album end? It ends fucking strong. It starts strong. There's great songs in the middle there. It's got Beth. It's got a ballad. It's got the fucking anthem in the beginning. Detroit Rock City, King of the Night. Like I think that's that's the hook. So I also I mean, we're gonna get into this stuff when we break down all the albums. But Love Gun has too many fillers for me. For anybody mm-hmm. else And same thing with uh, Rock and all over Is straight rock But as I've said When we reviewed the album It's a lot of eights Not any tens and nines Except for one Which is Mr. Speed And and, and that's what it's downfall I think is Nothing is bad on uh, It's a straight up awesome rock album But it it doesn't have like something that would wow somebody as far as because I think someone listen to Mr. Speed and go, that fucking song's awesome. But it's not gonna be like Detroit Rock City where you're like, holy shit, this is different. There's something up with this. That's how I look yeah. at it. Yeah, see, I think Destroyer, I think Destroyer has too many things that it, that might turn a fan off, whether it's I see, I don't think Destroyer is representative of what the band really is. That's why I think the album's terribly overrated. I think a song like Beth, I think a song like Great Expectations, I think a song like like I said, sweet pain. It's not a terrible song uh, to me. I was going to go rock and roll over. I think it's, yeah. I think, I think the production is raw. It's a balls out rock record. There's no ballads. I'll, and I'm an album with a bunch of sevens and eights. Th- that's, you know, you get, you got Colin, Dr. Love, you got baby driver. You got, I want you, you got Mr. Speed. You got, you know, making love. You got songs that are, I, I just, I, I think it, no, no, my, it's not my favorite kiss album, but I think it's probably the most representative of the classic sound where, you know, oh, I'd love to have somebody listen to maybe dress to kill, but they might be like, oh, this is kind of a poppy snappy record. But I think rock and roll over is that sweet spot of everything for them. You know, it's funny because when I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of Zeppelin the same way. Yep. To me, my fa- you know, maybe I shouldn't say my favorite, but I'll say like Led Zeppelin three for me sticks out for me. Yep. Um, Led Zeppelin physical graffiti. But if a newbie, I know there's a couple things that people don't like in there. I got to go try Zeppelin 4 for somebody. Because oh, yeah. there's no way you don't hear Black Dog or first, like, and be like, that's different. And right. then hear Rock and Roll without being, holy shit, this song yep. is fun and awesome. Yeah. And then you got to throw in the most epic song they've had and then throw it in when they're ending and with when the levee breaks. It to That's something that will track somebody like, oh, I get why people think this band is insane yeah same thing with the eagles i might like the long run better than hotel california but you don't hear the long like hotel california and hear that song or the last resort and then or and not be like what the fuck is this yeah holy shit yeah so it's by his question. I'm I'm thinking. That's all. I hear you. I hear. You. And, and and that question could be an entire episode, but we'll cut it with we'll cut it with those and answers. You know the same thing. The same thing. Like you might say, like oh, oh, if you said, "Sus, I want to get you into Rush. I want to get you into Steely Dan." What might be the most annoying to you? Because like the fans like this, but it might be something that really will knock you off and like, oh man, right. if I like this song, then I should like a lot of their other stuff. Right. And versus like the stuff that you really gets you because it's the, the niche of the man. Yeah. May not be what will pick my ears will pick up as like, you're right. I no. get it. I get good. why you like this. It's a good so, point. Yeah. I don't know. Great question. Yep. Great question, Gary. Thanks, buddy, as always. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Gary's the best. Um, Tom, where can people find us? 
Uh, they can find us asleep in between our copy of Off the Soundboard because this episode's been <laughs> on for 17 hours. This episode is as long as Ace's solo. Uh, no, people can find us. Uh, we got our email address, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com. We read all of your emails. We try to read all of them on the air. Some of them we might not read. They might not make it on the air, but we read all of them. Uh, we talk about them, so you can do that. And then, of course, social media. You heard our nice feedback section at the beginning of the episode, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, the DMs on each of those social media platforms. You can find us. We're there. Um, and we're part of the great Pantheon podcast network of shows, tons of great shows. We're proud to be part of that family. Uh, and as Zeus mentioned, too, Patreon. You can check us out at patreon.com and search for us and also the Patreon app. Check it out. See what the whole big party is, is about and uh, see if you want to be part of the family. And of course, our good friend Ed from Click T Shop, sponsoring our question of the week and designing our amazing show logo uh, for that and our album review crew monthly episode that we do. Yeah, so check out Ed at Click T Shop, Click with a K. Tons of great Kiss inspired gear, um, good stuff. So Ed's a friend of the show. So check, his, check him out. Yep. And Tom, I always like to tell people they can DM us on Instagram. Facebook, Twitter. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube. channel. <laughs> um, that's uh, been growing nonstop. We love the comments on YouTube. Uh, please make sure you like all the videos you see on there and you subscribe to it. Uh, please give us one of those five star, star. child reviews on Apple iTunes that helps us tremendously and anywhere else you can review our podcast like pod chaser. I'm not even sure about Spotify stitcher and other places, wherever you can give us a five-star review. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it and helps us a lot. And uh, we'll definitely make sure we read those on the air. Yep. Um, and once again, I always like to repeat the email, shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Please keep the emails coming. We love getting them, and we always read them, and most of the time we'll read them on the air. Mm -hmm. And, Tom, we always end our show with famous last kiss words. You got any? Oh, of course. Tonight, I want to see it in your eyes. Feel the magic. There's something that drives me wild. That's right, baby. Yeah. Um settle down, Star Child. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. Um you keep on shouting. You keep on shouting. Don, nice. Thank you. All right, great one. Uh, I, I hope we still have listeners after this episode. Look, you guys have been listening to us. If you're a new listener, we're an honest kiss podcast. We love the band. We wouldn't be 120 something episodes into a kiss podcast if we didn't. But one thing about this show is we're going to tell you how we feel. We don't do it for to get a rise out of people. We do it because that's how we feel. So we're interested in your feedback. If you guys love this album, God bless you. Happy for you. That's awesome. But this is how we feel about it. And you, you know, you listen to our show long enough. We're honest. Tom, you said it best on our introductory episode. We love the band. We will not be giving them foot rubs. Correct. Yep. And guess what? We still like the album. <laughs> that after, right after, after everything we said, I'll probably listen to it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Tom, thank you. Kiss Army. Thank you. Loudcasters, thank you. Guys, thank you so much. And uh, we all look forward to your feedback on this and see what you guys think of this album. Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, girl. <laughs> <laughs>